Aloha, party people. You are listening to Inside the Desert Oasis Room, episode number 127. This episode is sponsored by Tandawai Rum, the world's largest rum producer and winner of over 170 international medals in the past four decades. Check out their webpage at tandawaiusa.com or follow them on Facebook or Instagram at tandawaiusa. On this episode, we chat with comedian, actor, and host Mike Siegel. You might know Mike from HGTV's If Walls Could Talk or Fine Living Network's What You Get for the Money. You might have even seen him performing stand-up comedy on numerous shows like Last Comic Standing, The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, or even recognized him in roles he's played in TV shows like Jag, Prison Break, or Mike and Molly. But on this episode, we chat about our common passion of traveling. Mike has traveled all over the world, from Europe to Africa and more. He's even climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Hear about his numerous adventures near and far. And of course, we simply couldn't do this episode without being joined by our old friend, Boris Hamilton. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did bringing it to you. And if you did, hit that subscribe button. Subscribing makes it easier for you to follow our adventures. Shares on your social media pages are always appreciated. And if you'd like to help support the show, go to DesertOasisRoom.com to pick up some merch or make a donation. This podcast does not survive without the help of its sponsors or its listeners. So every purchase or donation, no matter the size, is totally appreciated and helps keep this podcast coming to you every week. Okay, folks, here he is, the one and only Mike Siegel. Well, not live, but we're recording. In Aloha, the studio, Mike. In my, in my home studio. Uh, thanks for co- letting us come over here to <laughs> sure. this beautiful home studio in downtown. AKA my living room. I thought we were in Venice, actually. I'm when, on the whatever. border of Venice. Yeah. If you go, this is actually Just on like the a block, right? Not even a block. You just literally walk out the building and take a left and 20 feet is the border of Venice. Ah. And you can see the parking laws change. Like this is permit parking right here, but if you park south of my building, it's no permits. Okay, so just that curb right there where it curves out. Yeah, that's the that's the line. Okay, you, so I'm parked in Venice then. Yeah, you can actually see the paved yeah. difference in the in the road. We parked in Venice. So. Okay, yeah, I, you're I originally fine. I parked in there, Santa Monica, and then some old woman backed into my car, which was great. Oh, really? But yeah. you know, just the bumper like people used to do all the time. I'm yeah. just not used to seeing that, and I gave her like four feet. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble with parking in Venice is somebody might be living in your car by the time you go out there. There you go. There you go. So I hear a lot of interesting things about what you've been doing recently, working on a cruise ship. I've been on cruise ships uh, performing stand-up for about three years now. And I was never planning on doing that, but it just kind of... And it just kind of fell on your lap? Or? Yeah, there was a... I, mean, I don't know, Boris, remember? Do you remember Bruce Smirnoff? I do. So Bruce was an older comic who mm-hmm. did cruises for years and years. And uh, burned out and eventually decided he's work for the cruise agent, which is in Miami, this agency. And he called me up after seeing me on Last Comic Standing and go, you ever think of doing cruises? And I was like, well, you know, not till I was a much older person. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, ah, give it a shot. Because traditionally that was the way, that was the normal trajectory for a comedian. You either, okay. first you age out of colleges. Yeah, yeah. You get a little too old to do colleges. And then eventually you age out of clubs because you're talking to people way younger than you and stuff. And then you kind of segue into corporate events and yeah. cruises, in Vegas. which is where your people are in Vegas and that kind of stuff. Is it everything that you thought it was going to be? Because I think the average person looks at a cruise ship job as a dream job. They get to quote unquote travel the world. And people, yeah, people say that. But, you know, after the second week on the ship, tell me you're not ready to yeah. get off. You yeah. Know, it just... <laughs> You, because people see it as on vacation and, and someone who travels as much as I do and then I'm not a fan of the actual of cruising as a type of travel yeah, just because it's okay. good for people who want everything done for them and I get that I get people who are just like you know we just want to sit check out 
we don't want them to think about what to eat, what to do, you know, where to go. Yeah, I'm in. The itinerary is all set. I'm in. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> see, and it's and my friends with kids like it too because they can just kind of let right, the kids go right. off. And there's a kids de- department where it's basically camp counselors keep them busy all day and right. But the never having to pay for stuff is a big deal for parents who are sure. always reaching into their pocket. And so I get that, but for someone who's pretty independent, I like to have control over my itinerary and not have it done for me. And it's a certain kind of travel, like you said. I mean, yeah. when I travel, I like to live like a local. And when you're on a cruise ship, you, you don't see anything more than eight hours. No, yeah. And I mean, you go into a port, you see specifically what's tailored for the cruise ship passenger. Yeah, right? that's so what I don't like yeah. either. If you want to find out about a culture of a place or really, it's not the kind of travel I like. If you want a little teaser, a little taste, you can get a little bit, but... Yeah, what are you going to see in six to eight hours? I mean, you're not. Yeah. You end up going to the same sites and things, and with everybody else from the ship. And then, so then, if you're going to the same sites every week, do you end up feeling like you're becoming a local to that the, site? Well, when you work on them, you, you start to realize where you're. Like I've been to Alaska for the last three summers, and okay. it's the same towns like Skagway, Ketchikan, Juneau. But the good thing about Alaska is they can just walk off the ship and walk from the ship through the town into the mountains and have like great hikes and nature and it's yeah, that's really yeah, nice yeah and so the crew will know like where to get the good wi-fi where oh, to get course, the yeah. uh you know <laughs> which is a big deal in another country alaska is not so bad because your phone works up there okay it's still america so your phone plan works but say the caribbean or another country yeah. it, like and it's not just us i mean a lot of the crew at least in a lot of the lines they're usually filipino or indonesian yeah and uh, you know they have they're on board for like ten months. Yeah, they're so like, they have families back there. Slaves. Oh my gosh, they're trying to. Uh, oh, and they're working more than eight hours. Oh yeah, they're oh, doing yeah, like yeah, eighteen yeah. hour days. It's yeah. a hard, it's yeah, a hard it's life. A, it's a hard life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got families back home, and they're trying to like FaceTime with them and stuff. So they run the, you know, and there's places you'll see signs where they can wire money to the Philippines, right? Or, or wire you know, whatever they got to do. It's kind of geared toward them for the crew that comes off these ships because they're all trying to call the same places, you know, and stuff. <laughs> it's a lot of that. At least I've been doing a lot of Holland America, and it's mostly almost all Filipino and well, Indonesian. Mm-hmm. When I, got, have in, I think Indian. they work all the all the lines, right? Yeah. Because well, when, when I would cruise, like, yeah. Carnival or Norwegian or, or um, what are some of the other ones? I did uh, Princess. Princess, Princess, Celebrity. Uh, I always had the Filipino waiter. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, um, when I first started working my job, me and another guy were like, let's get a job on a cruise ship. Like that way when you're not working, you're in the pool right. playing volleyball. <laughs> and so I called like Princess Cruises in Beverly Hills and I was talking to some guy, like just randomly called and I was like, yeah, how do you get a job? And he's like, we don't really hire Americans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it, exactly. No, the only uh, Americans really are on that I find are in the in the staff, like the um, officers, the cruise directors. Uh, so there's there's a cast and crew of young singers and dancers usually, okay. and they're all like right out of college, usually like early twenties, because they you know it's a good gig for them. I mean, if I was right out of school, and I mean, you don't need you're not spending money when you're on no. board. I mean, if you're smart it's about like it, it's like being in the navy. You yeah, know, you, just you see the checks. world, and I yeah. mean, and a lot of them they're on like six month contracts usually, so they they'll uh, do it for six months, make as much money as they can, and then they go to New York and starve right. for the next six months right. to try to get on Broadway. And when they run out of money, they go back on the ships. Well, you know, like I haven't been on a ton of cruises, probably four, maybe five, and all the comics have been American. Yeah, on yeah, all yeah. the boats that I've been on. Well, it depends yeah. on where you're going and things like that, but. Yeah, mostly. I mean, a lot of the European ones will bring in guys from uh, London. Okay. So I don't I don't work over there as much, but it depends on. They just look at who's on board. Mm-hmm. If they look at it and say there's 85 percent Americans on board, then mm. it's easy to have a, an American comic. But I, that's one of the reasons I don't work as much in Asia. I've never done an Asian cruise there. Musicians do a lot because that kind of carries over, and I know some magicians who work over there because but I need English speakers comedy you need English speakers yeah yeah yeah. so if they don't you know, every so often I'll see like in the first minute of the show like a whole bunch like a group of Chinese 
just get up and walk out. Because <laughs> they're like, nope, you don't understand a word. You don't understand anything nope. you're saying. But that was that was a good lesson somebody told me uh, before I did my first one. I called a couple of other like older comics who have been doing it a long time. I was like, can I get any advice? And they're like, yeah. One of them, that was a good note. It's like, if people get up and leave, don't say anything to them. Because in a club, would you be like, where the hell are you going? Right, you know, just, right. And you could bust their balls or something. But there, it's like, it's all included. So they don't, they, you're just buying time. They might have a dinner reservation. They right. might have go to the trivia contest. They might just be tired and old. You know, there's a lot of old people. So you got or you have to pee. You just let them go. Let them walk out. And just, but doesn't mean you don't see them though. Right. How different do you have to tweak your act for the cruise ship? Well, there's no, every cruise line's different. Like, you can't do local I've never worked jokes. For, what's that? You can't do local jokes. No, I mean, I've never... I mean, you have to be clean. That's why most comics don't do them. You, you have to be pretty clean. Okay. And swearing and stuff like that. Although some some lines will have like a late night show that you can right. do. Um, oh. They say, you can say anything you want. It's like, well, you say that. You know, but you're anything you want. And my anything I want is a different... Completely different. Well, I, but, a- I mean, they did say, like, I've been doing mostly Holland America line this yeah, last yeah. couple of years. And yeah, we had... Especially now, it's like no politics, mm-hmm. no religion stuff, mm-hmm. sexual innuendo. I mean, it's really what you know. We're a pretty uptight country. They're more they're more afraid of offending anyone. They just don't want to offend anyone. But, so and your that's, clientele I mean, you know, that's like you don't really have to kill. You don't need a standing yeah. ovation. Yeah. But they're more afraid. Like they take those surveys and the comments very oh, yeah, seriously. That's important stuff. So I they listen that. to that stuff. We're in a comedy club. They just. They really take those things just to get your mailing address. You know, right, right, right. I did right. A, a weekend in Utah, and Friday, Saturday, you had to be clean, and Sunday, you could cut loose. And it was like, I was so exhausted from trying to be clean Friday and Saturday, I just pretty much did the same sort of thing. Yeah. Sunday, was, you can cut loose? Yeah, Sunday, That's you odd, can cut loose. It was like, that is whatever. Odd. Yeah, but they, they're pretty touchy now. But, but I would also think that, like, Carnival has the reputation of being the party yeah. party boat right? I mean they're different I, like I've never so you're gonna have them. a different kind of clientele there which I would assume that you could probably be a lot more loose-lipped on that yeah on that usually boat. I've what I've found is the more and I would say carnival is probably I guess the quote-unquote lowest budget one sure you know as they not my words but they were saying it's more of a Walmart crowd sure they say but yeah. it's like the more entry level mm-hmm. but in terms of laughers they're the best crowds. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so they're really in it to yeah. have fun. I mean, the hardest sets I've done have been on like the super high end, uh, six star lines, okay. just loaded with rich people who are tough to let loose. Man, they just don't give it up. Yeah, I, I found they that just, they're hard. When I go on the different types of lines, the carnival boats are what all the drinkers are. Oh yeah, they, it's all the young people that it's a boozing like party. You, yeah, like you said, it's it's a carnival. kind of a kind of a Walmart, right? yeah, and that's, that's carnival, what carnival. they go for. What's the most interesting place you've been to? Like the most, like okay, this this was worth well, it. Antarctica. Okay, I mean that was, but that was on a high end. It was a line called Seaborn, which is like all inclusive, so even the booze is included, but it, they pay a lot of money. I mean, they were on a three week tour. It started in Chile and it went around the tip of. Um, South America and I caught the ship after a week I met it in Ushuaia Argentina which is southernmost city in the world wow and you ca- I caught the ship there and then I was on for two weeks to Antarctica and back and then we came back to Buenos Aires or Montevideo Uruguay and Buenos Aires which uh, it was great but I mean that was that was the last continent I hadn't been to and that one was I don't know how I was going to get there because it's expensive right and not only did I not have to pay. I was paid to go, so that's, that was that's how you do but it. But the ship, but the shows were tough. I thought, you know. What are your rooms like? That line uh, different in every line. Okay, like I've been in some where I've been down, kind of. I'm right. not in the bow. I'm not in the deep bowels with the Filipino dudes, <laughs> you know, who are like sharing rooms down, right. way down low. Let her wow. do I'm giving like Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah, level steerage. Right. I'm not in guest entertainer status, so I'm like I some I get ba- almost like a guest room. Okay. Uh, others, uh, there's a special area. It's kind of like it says crew only. You go through the door, but it's a better room than everybody else would get in the staff. Okay. But 
So, so it's not so bad. Like on Love Boat, like when you see Gopher's Room. Yeah. First of all, Love Boat is BS. It's not- <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> Love and Boat. When you work Princess, which is what Love Boat was, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. they still, they play it. There's one channel in your TV in your room that plays non- a oh, new show every day. That's hilarious. <laughs> and I don't know if you've seen it. Re- it's horrible. That oh show. yeah, yeah, no. yeah. It is I, horrible. I, 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 it's on like me TV or cozy or one yeah, of those. Yeah, yeah. And so I'll watch it every once in a while, and then it's like, you, you forget that like once it got like mid eighties, they skipped, they they replaced Jack Jones theme with a woman's theme. Oh, I don't remember that. And then like Terry Hatcher was a regular <laughs> as a Love Boat mermaid. They had like a song and dance oh, part. Right. They're like, ladies and gentlemen, the mermaids. And Terry Hatcher was one of them. Still hot. God. Still hot, 1984. Still hot. Oh, of course. 2019. Well, hotter. Yeah. yeah. Hotter. 1984. Oh, hotter then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she's still hot now, in case she's listening. But then you'd watch for the first five minutes. I would always watch every day for the first five minutes to see who the guest stars were. Right. And it was this crazy menagerie. It's like Carol Channing and Fred Willard. And like, <laughs> now I got to watch. And yeah. Alan Thick <laughs> or somebody. And then Charo. Right. And then yeah. the village people. Like, what? Yeah. yeah. And they played. Like, they I played gotta stick around for this train wreck. They played a round robin with Fantasy Island, and they also guessed it on other shows. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All Aaron Spelling. Yeah, all the Aaron Spelling stuff. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was boy, and I loved it as a kid. But man, is it unwatchable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's terrible. And you can see how there was like the pool was just a, so obviously a set. Oh yeah. It well, was they, funny. They would shoot exteriors in the first couple seasons. You could see. Okay, they they went to like Long Beach and. Shot some exterior stuff on the on the railings and stuff. Right. By the after a few seasons in, they didn't even bother. It's just no. so obviously the, <laughs> right. the studio. Well, what's cool is that same set. I saw him use it on Heart to Heart. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Is that spelling too? That was spelling too. Yeah. Oh man. But yeah, I was on, I mean, there were some places I still haven't gone that I've, I I never did any of the South Pacific stuff, which would be perfect tiki wise. That's you know that's interesting to hear because most of my travel is. It's all tropical travel. Yeah. I've I never went, been to Europe. So you're kidding. No, I'm oh, wow. not kidding. So when I listen to your podcast, mm. I learn a lot of things from the episodes that you put out because there's a lot of Europe talk in there. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of Europe talk in there. Yeah. And you know my wife, she's being a female, she's got more of a romantic mind, right? <laughs> she wants to go to Europe. So she's going to Greece next year or actually this year now. And you don't? Well, it's just you're not curious. I about always it? say I am curious, but I I have so many other things that I have above Europe on my list. Okay, I just like the feeling of being slightly sunburned with <laughs> sand in my. You toes can do that there. And, yeah, you can do. Yeah, that I, in know, Greece. I know. I know. I was just in the Greek islands. I was in uh, Greece, and I'm sure parts of Spain. Right? Oh yeah, the Spanish coast. The I was in the Algarve coast of uh, Portugal last year, which is really cool. Beautiful beaches. Yeah, oh, it's, it's awesome. I mean, Croatia. Has beautiful beaches. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really you love it. Yeah, get, but and, and uh, I have a friend who his favorite place to dive is in Greece. Oh, really? Yeah, you yeah. Know it's, where? In the, it's off the Mediterranean somewhere, but I don't, I don't know where. Yeah, um, he told me before, and I don't remember. Really yeah. Yeah. What a death. Well, yeah. the closest I, I did one, I did a crossing from Vancouver to Hawaii. Okay, and. Which is brutal because it's five days at sea. It's like five, six days at sea. And yeah. The days at sea are the worst because they're just going. You're basically stuck in a hotel. Right. Yeah. And you can't leave. At least if you're in port, you can get off land, walk around a little bit. But and once you get far out in the open sea, the it can get rough. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we had some pretty rough nights. Antarctica was the toughest. You had to go through the Drake Passage and going down. It wasn't so bad, but when we were coming back up. It was just four days of just up and down, up and, and down. It's crazy because it was, you know, oh. it was horrible 700 years ago. No, and it's, it's horrible now. There's, yeah. no, Always. there's nothing we can do to make that any better. And I'm in a nice cruise ship. I yeah. can't imagine being in the hull of a wooden thing. Oh. These guys had balls like. Uh, well, oh when my, you're we're going to Antarctica, pussies. though. Oh, we're, totally. Oh, my God. <laughs> what do you, where do you, what's the port of call in our, Antarctica? Uh, none. Well, the rule is if anybody ever gets a ship, if. If the ship is over 500 passengers, you can't get off the ship. Okay. So basically, you have to watch it from the railings. But my ship was so it's 450. So it's just for the view when yeah. you're going down there. And it's... Uh, so my ship was smaller. It was 450 passengers. So we would take little Zodiac boats, the little kind of inflatable yeah. kind of motor. Yeah. And we could go on shore and walk around with like penguins surrounding us. And 
So it you commando closed. in. And we commando in. We get off on and the we beach. could walk around. I mean, it was we couldn't just go off on our own, but right. But yeah, we could walk around, and that's what you want to do. I mean, I it would have been much less of an experience if we couldn't get off the ship. It still would have been cool. But is right. this for people that are working on the ship, or passengers can get off the ship on those? No, it's for them. It's for the it's passengers. For the, okay, really. all but right. We could all. I could anyway. I yeah, don't, you could jump on. There one, might have yeah. been some crew that might have been not been able to do it, but they give you they gave us like uh, special boots and stuff. We had to keep outside because the penguin crap is so smelly. Right, and stuff. right, right. Oh wow! And you drag that back inside of the ship, it'll it's never, not the smell leave. will never get out. Oh, you know, wow. you don't want to bring it into your <laughs> luggage <laughs> or your cabin or anything. So you there's like basically lockers outside on the deck where you keep your boots. Because the penguin crap was so I was bad. I was going to say that the penguin exhibit at the zoo is the smelliest. Yeah, exhibit. yeah. I mean, that, it's it's horrible. It but they look so formal. They look so yeah. Right. They, they, so it's dress nice, <laughs> but they are cool. I mean, that was cool. But when what it hits you down there is that there's just there's no cities. There's no people. So the yeah, silence yeah. and then the darkness. Oh, well, I just and it's so to your, quiet at night. It's unbelievable. I listened to your last one. And the guy was talking about how silence is a luxury. Yeah. And he loved it down there. But then you, you were talking about hiking Kilimanjaro? When did, when did you do that? I did that in 2014. Okay. Yeah, I did it. Um, I took the shortest route. There's all these different routes, but I took the one um, that has cabins along the way. And that was about five days, which most people would say that's too short. Like, you want to take your time. Because of the altitude, if you go up too quick, oh, you can get the bends or something. Yeah, right. you get altitude right. sickness, and I think I got a little bit of it. Um, I felt it the last because uh, I went to Zanzibar afterwards, just kind of recover. I took a little plane <laughs> to this island off the coast, you know, and just kind Most of sat there. Most people go to Zanzibar to recover. Yeah, That's- and I kind of felt like I was uh, <laughs> hung over for three days. Oh, okay. And just and it's like I think I this is like normal fatigue. I think I I probably got a little. So that was just altitude. a Mike Siegel. I'm going to Africa. Yeah, trip. I was wanting okay. to do it, and uh, I took a safari beforehand, like two weeks, right through like the Serengeti and uh, yeah, the Ngorongoro Ngor yeah. Crater in Kenya and Tanzania, and then uh, yeah, did the climb, which was hard. You know, I've I've, I've done a lot of, I, like I did a marathon. I've done you know I scuba dive and I've done like. A lot of activities and a hike a lot, but it's the altitude that gets you. It's not like it's more of a trail, it's like yeah. you can do here. But but it's that lack the of peak oxygen. is like nineteen thousand three hundred thinner air, right? Yeah, and it hits you. I realize that you've been in like Colorado or something like that. Sure, and that's, yeah, but Colorado's only at five thousand. Well, there no. Well, that's Denver. Okay, but if you go up into the ski mountains, okay, some yeah. of them are up okay. eleven thousand okay. feet, and you can feel it. But there, I feel it more like. Like up there skiing, it would be, oh, I'm a little shortness of breath. Got to pee a lot. You know, you're thirsty a bunch. But that's, but on Kilimanjaro, I was like at about 15,000 feet. That's when I really started to feel. It's like headache, <laughs> nausea. Like I, I just want to go home. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was hard. It was hard. So our last camp was about 15,000 feet and the peaks at 19,300. Wow. So we had to wait. They woke us up at, Midnight, yeah. Uh, they woke us up at a little before midnight. We had to put on all our heavy duty, like right. cold weather gear, and headlamps, and we just went single file all uh, for the next six hours, zigzagging on vacation. Yeah, <laughs> oh, my, that's zigzagging my first up. thought. Yeah, <laughs> my first thought but, is, yeah, you did that for fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh. They, they woke us up. I was out right there. I was <laughs> oh. like, what? <laughs> but it was a. I never done like a. I mean, I'm not a mountain climber, and the yeah. thing is, one the good thing about it is, it's not a technical climb. You don't need ropes or anything like that. Well, like so you said, it's just a, like a trail. It's a trail. So, but it's just, it's the altitude that gets everyone because yeah. I mean, altitude's a weird thing. You can either, I mean, it, it, it can take out a Navy SEAL, and then a 65 year old lady will just be fine. Right. It hits right. everybody different. Right. So some people we lost. I was in a group of 12, and 11 of us made it, but one guy. On that last night thing, he just started getting wobbly. He was a younger guy, in good shape, but yeah, he, he all of a sudden he was walking crooked. <laughs> and he just wow. started slurring his words, kind of like he was drunk and stuff, mm-hmm. and then he just kind of like tipped over. And, wow. you guys just and we just him left there? him there with one guide, and we just kept going. Okay. And yeah. 
But stay here. Yeah, we'll you be stay back. here. We'll be we'll back. Be back. We'll, 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 you know, <laughs> and we did. We saw him coming back. Okay. But yeah, so, how was it? Was it? It was amazing. You get up there, and you know, so you get the first peak. Yes, yeah, so we left maybe around midnight to one o'clock, and there's this first ridge you get to, and it's been dark the whole night. You know, you've just been following one another up and down, you know, zigzagging across, and you finally get up to this peak, and then the dawn is starting to come up. And it's pretty amazing because, you know, you're above the clouds at this point. And then you still have another hour and a half to go till you get to the actual peak. And oh, then wow. you go around, and but the little more light's coming up. And that's when you start to see the glaciers and the snows of yeah. Kilimanjaro up there. Now you're finally in snow. And uh, you get to the, the sign there. What You know, you're finally at the peak. And you're like, yes. And everybody's hugging and crying and taking photos. And then... You look around and you're going, shit, we got to go back down now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and that took seven and a half hours just from the, the night. And we haven't slept hardly, you know, and it's just like, oh, man. <laughs> so who's your guide so, on the way So up? your adrenaline's like, oh, well, okay. yeah, yeah. you're happy you made it. And you're like, now we got to get back. So it what took seven and a half up from our last camp. We had It took about four, four and a half going down. And now you're burning your other muscles going down. Right. And your legs are just fried. And I think by noon we got back to the camp, and that's when you had lunch, and then you could finally relax. Because as you go, now going back down, it just you just get more and more air as you go yeah, down. Yeah. And it's, but you start, you see the terrain change. Like with the starting gate is in rainforest. It's jungle, basically. There's monkeys in the trees. And, and every day you go by, and it's like the trees get shorter and shorter, and then they become shrubs. And then you just become little plants, and then it's just rocks. It's like moonscape. So right, you see, right. and going back down, it's the reverse. It just gets more vegetation. Right. It's really kind of cool. So you see, like four different ecosystems. So the, who are your guides that go up? Are they the, are they people that have been up there locals, before? Yeah. Okay. Our our main guide, our lead guide, was a guy who was seventy years old. Seventy years Holy old. Holy moly! And he'd been doing it for fifty years. Wow. And in the busy season, he goes up that route twice a week. Wow. See, and these guys don't get the same kind of glory, right? I mean, oh no. Well, we felt you feel bad because yeah. everybody gets a porter. See, I just carried my day pack, which is like a regular backpack, like a smaller, which with water and snacks and whatever rain gear, whatever thing you need. But my main pack, they had a porter carry it. Some kid who was probably like sixteen years old. Yeah, and we're there in our like night North Face. You right. know, nice <laughs> expensive boots. And he's like in flip flops going up carrying my big bag. And I yeah. feel like, oh. So you feel for, and, and not only that, they're bringing the, the cooking gear, right. the food, and all the everything. You would think they would just have like a certain kitchen up oh, there. Well, it's a whole army. You know, you got to bring everything. Okay. Uh, especially if you're, the, all the other routes have tents and, right. and you set up camp. And these guys set it up. And the, I mean, you, Tip everybody afterwards. Okay, sure, I mean, you have yeah, to. yeah. But that's it's a big part of their economy. But I mean, it's hard. It's I mean, these kids. Now, are you gonna are you gonna be one of those six peak guys no, or anything? No. Okay. The only thing I do want to do is um, go to Everest Base Camp, which I've interviewed a bunch of people. A few of my friends have done it. It's actually lower than Kilimanjaro. I mean, oh, it's okay. eighteen thousand something feet, but it's just farther to get to. You know, it's in Nepal, yeah. right? And uh, but that seems pretty cool. That that's what I want to do. Just see the views and everything like that. So see now, the views of all the plastic bottles laying around. Yeah, right. No, that's yeah. As a diver in the oceans, that's the hardest. Oh, the do you grab stuff? Disposable. If you see it? Yeah, I mean, but it's it's really getting out of control. I mean, okay. dispo, yeah. single use plastic and stuff. It's everywhere in the oceans. I mean, you go to like Bali or something yeah. like that. It's very yeah. heartbreaking. You go to these islands in the middle of nowhere, and then just you go to one side of the island, and you look at the beach, and it just. Have you been to Belize? I've been to Belize. Have you? So you've been to? Have you been to Ambergris Key? I didn't go to Amber. I went to Cocker. Oh, Key Cocker. I've yeah. been there too. When I was on Ambergris Key, the main beach there, uh, in the the name of the town is uh, San Pedro. Yeah. And the main beach is just covered in garbage, and it's a beautiful beach. Yeah. And it's a shame. And I'll think like, you know, a lot of these locals, they're just, just doing nothing, you know, saying so they're doing nothing. 
And I'm thinking, you know, somebody could probably put a crew together and clean this up in, in a weekend, you know? Yeah, but you need then like it, political then will and you yeah, need the money then, yeah. to do it. And, and well, uh, you need a government that's going to enforce it. You need yeah. the people that are going to, I mean, they don't. You need a you need the payoff. You need yeah, that, you got to convince. If I do this, what's in it for me? Right, but uh, you see it everywhere. I mean, it's really heartbreaking. Like I said, Bali is getting choked in these amazing beaches. The Philippines, Philippines. I went to Boracay. Um, Boracay. Yeah. There, I think they closed it recently. They just reopened it. Oh, did yeah, they? Yeah, they closed it for. I think it was supposed to be six months, and then they ended up closing it for, I think, almost a year. No, it's so, a real problem. I mean, yeah, it's not a place. But it was killing the beach. I mean, it was. Yeah, uh, it was. You know, it was dying. Basically, this beach was becoming this dead zone. You know. Yeah. And. Um, no, all through like in Goa, and India, and. Um, yeah. But, it's, it's a serious problem. I mean, it's it's, and and getting worse. So I have been talking to a lot of people that have been, working with. Uh, these organizations and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And I try to be conscious of it. Try not to use. Uh, Thanks for the glass of water. Yeah, see? Yeah. Right, see. But when I travel, though, that's tough. If you go to places where you can't drink the water, mm-hmm. I end up, you end up getting plastic bottles. You know, and then you just throw drinking it water. You get a lot of plastic yeah, bottles. I, I like to throw it in the water, whatever. <laughs> but actually, the cruises <laughs> are actually really, you know, the cruise companies are pretty regulated with that. I mean, mm-hmm. Nothing goes overboard. I mean, you'll get well, really busted. And the Although old, some, go ahead. Well, they worry about like uh, sewage and stuff like that. Somebody just got busted. I mean, it was Princess or something got busted, try, uh, discharging sewage. But they do have to treat it. Well, and they're a lot better than they used to be in the Love Boat era. Right, but the, I mean, they used to pollute a lot more. The, they sure did. The Dave Matthews tour bus in Chicago that yeah. shit all over. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. That was that's the worst. Um, didn't cruise ships? Didn't you used to be able to hit golf balls into the ocean? But now oh, yeah, I'm sure. some sort of like alka seltzer be, yeah. ball or something. Yeah, and yeah. shoot skeet off the. Yeah, you know these. Oh, yeah. In the '80s, I remember being on a cruise ship and passengers that had been on that boat before telling me when to go to the back of the boat to watch them dump out all the uneaten food from the buffets because the sharks would come up and you see all the right. sea life come up to eat it. Wow. Well, that's organic in terms of, um, there's a separate thing. They do take the food scraps and, the, and they oh, treat so they, it a certain so they way. Do, I think yeah, there's okay. a way to do that. But yeah, the sewage is the bad thing. Yeah. And yeah. also, uh, I mean, somebody told me that just a, a ship idling in port oh, I believe all it. day gives off enough exhaust is like 10,000 cars. You know, so it's just yeah. like, and I'll be some, you go to Nassau, or something, mm-hmm. and there'd be like five, six ships a day coming in. Um, so that's, and there's this issue now of like how much our local business is getting because a lot of people will just eat on the ship because it's free. So local restaurants aren't making as much as you think they should. They're right. like, oh, it's bringing in all this money. It's like, yeah, but then it, it's spending not, it's it. It's really not. And then certain operators are getting it if they're hooked in with the cruise line. Right, right. But if you order an excur- excursion from the ship, mm-hmm. the ship's going to get its cut. You know, their partners are going to get a little something, but little local guys, I mean, so it, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. You know, these islands want to, like, how many ships do we bring in? And do you have to control it? But And there's been a backlash now, like certain places. There's just too many, like Venice, uh, Barcelona. They don't want the uh, ships on there anymore. Well, they, they trying to limit it. I mean, they, they know they can't stop it completely, but... Uh, it's just choking the city, like Dubrovnik in Croatia. Oh, every every day, same. you go to the old city, you can't move. It's just packed with people. Yeah, and yeah. it finally thins out at the end of the day when they all go back. But the local infrastructure can't handle it. Like Iceland, Iceland became a real hot spot the last couple of years to go to. But it's a small island yeah. with a small population. They just don't have the enough garbage cans. Well, I mean, it, yeah, like yeah. around, yeah. it's the same as like museums. And it's yeah. like you, if you treat the music like the country like a museum, like you pull up, you're like, cool, no one's here, and then 17 buses show up. Yeah, you're like, oh, well, yeah. my day's ruined. And a big factor now is that you know the Chinese are starting to travel more, uh, mm-hmm. and you know they get around, and it's giant bus loads of them, and and um, you know that just adds to more and more crowd, and the Russians right. are traveling more, and you know. And, not to stereotype, but you know, the, it's kind of like new, new money. You know, these are people yeah, that haven't gotten yeah. around that much before, right. and so they're usually not to generalize, but they're not really as uh, cognizant of the environment. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in terms really of flicking cigarette butts into the water yeah. or... Um, or leaving them on the ground. Yeah, yeah. or tramping on uh, land they're not supposed to or right. whatever it is. Taking selfies in the wrong place right. or, or just overrunning places, just, just bodies. Yeah. There's oh, too many people in the world is basically what I'm Yeah, saying. yes. <laughs> you know, over the years, because of cruise ship travel, it's actually been a factor for where I choose to go because, like, Roatan is a place that I really enjoyed. Yeah, I was just and, there last month. And I hate it when the cruise ship is in town. Yeah. Because we stay on, on West Bay Beach, and it's idyllic, and there's probably... 20, 30 people on the beach at any one time at the very, very most during the day. Then the, the cruise ship comes in and then there's 2,000 people on yeah. the beach. And it's and they trample on everything, you know. So they climb the rocks where they're called, you know, the, the wild iguanas are and they scare the iguanas off mm -hmm. and then they trample the reef because there's a beautiful reef that you can swim to right from the shore. And um, you're usually the only ones on it. When yeah. the cruise ship isn't in town, when the cruise ship's in town, there are people standing on the reef adjusting their mask. You know, I mean, it's like, come on, people, be a little bit more respectful <laughs> yeah. with what you're doing. Yeah, I stayed in the, I was there for a week staying in the West End. Oh, and West End is great, too. Yeah, I was diving there. I was getting my advanced open okay. water okay. there. So I just stayed a week, and uh, like you said, it was during the day, there's just people walking around everywhere. Yeah. And then when sunset would come, it was nice because we all go to the same bar right. and watch the sunset. And you would know everybody yeah. who were there that week because, you know, you'd see the same people. There's yeah. only three yeah. bars to go to. And There's you go only to three bars, yeah. Sunset, we go to this one. <laughs> After dinner, we go to that one. But then I got to know, like, yeah, a couple cool, these three girls from Canada, and this one dude from Ohio. We just hung out all week. Oh, that's cool. But during the day, yeah, like you said, it was nuts and there was traffic everywhere and big crazy. buses coming in and people buying their little trinkets and stuff and but what what do you drink when you're on the cruises uh depending on where well each cruise line is different on what you're allowed to do because i have a friend who was just doing disney and he said they're not allowed into the crew bar okay and stuff knock on wood i found on holland they still let me into the um, there's an officer's bar then there's a crew bar okay so it's two different kind but you of, couldn't it's very drink, segregated. Like the crew bars were like the crew, got, like the Filipino right, right, dudes and, right. and girls and they have their own, which you, they kind of like it. I mean, they have their own karaoke they do down there and stuff like that. The officer's bar is is where like everybody else goes. Basically where the white folks go. Okay. And you hate to say that, but that's how it usually breaks down. But it's like the officers, the um, uh, cast and crew. Um, or the so you cast wouldn't drink and, with the passengers? I can. Okay. Um, I get maybe, like I said, each line is different. Like in Holland, I get like 50% off okay. at, the, at the regular on board. Um, some will get, I've seen as low as 10%. Um, yeah, but like a beer in the officer's bar is like a dollar and a oh. quarter. Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, so are yeah. you a beer guy? Or are you drinking mixed drinks? What do you do? What do you I do like it both. I like, if I mix drinks, I usually get... Uh, I'm more vodka okay. than anything. Of course, when you're on the island, you get any kind of rum. Kind right, of right. If you get right. offshore, you got to go with rum. I like to go with the locals have. If I'm in Europe, I'll have more wine, unless I'm in Germany or in the beer belt, which would be, there's three countries you have to go to if you like beer, and it's Germany, uh, the Czech Republic, and Belgium. Okay. And then the you can't go wrong. Belt. Then you got to get beer. I haven't heard. The, I call that the beer. I haven't belt. heard the That's beer awesome. belt before. I'm coining it. So I, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but anybody who's into beer has got to make a pilgrimage to those three yeah. places. Um, and my favorite is actually the Czech Republic for beer. I mean, it's unbelievably good. Like you could go to the cheapest, you know, dive in uh, in Prague or something, yeah. and just order whatever the cheapest tap is, and you get it. You're like, holy crap! This, this is, is good amazing. beer. <laughs> I'd be paying thirty dollars for this in, in LA. <laughs> Are there any Czech brands out here that we can get, that we can try? Well, yeah. Oh, the Pilsner was um, the biggest one. Can't help you. Because uh, now I'm curious. That's why I'm, yeah. that's why I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, I'm drawing a blank right now, but I know uh, Pilsner Urkel. Okay. Um, that's that's the biggest one. That's like their bud of... Okay. That's good. It's good beer. I have to give that In a Belgium, try. of course, they have your... Uh, 
your big ones. Uh, Belgium mm. is. Uh, is that Heineken? No, Heineken is uh, Amsterdam. Dutch. Oh, and Carlsberg is Amsterdam too. Right? Carlsberg is Copenhagen, Denmark. Okay. I toured that brewery. Okay. That was the first brewery I ever toured. Like my first backpacking tour. Uh, my I was first time I ever left the country. It was after college. I was backpacking through Europe and stuff like that. And I found myself in we were in Copenhagen, and I was like, "Oh, let's tour the Carlsberg Brewery." And I went there, and like most brewery tours here in America or something, you'll get like maybe one beer at the end of the tour. Like you Guinness in Ireland, Dublin. You, I toured the Guinness one a couple times, and you just get one Guinness at the end. But there we went, and this was '89. But we go there and they had like a, a beer garden and then bottles of their different brands all on the tables. And I just sat with a family and only the father was drinking. So that left them all to me. They were like, how bad? It's always getting hammered. Get drunk and, with dad. Yeah. And me and this one Canadian dude I met, I'm still friends with. He and I just ended up hanging out and just cleaning out the table, yeah. all the other tables and just like, oh man. That was a good afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we get back to cruises, can you tell? We can leave cruises too. No, no, no. We're going back. Oh in. man. No, I he think wants to go I, back we, in. We could be done. Okay. But uh, but I have other questions that I want to talk oh, go about. Ahead. That, but go ahead. Can you tell the story of when you got home from college? Of um, home from college. Yeah. Which one? Is this an old bit I used to do? Yeah, it's the greatest. One of the greatest bits of all time. Oh. <laughs> when he said, uh, he's like, you, wait, you don't do this anymore? No, no, no. I thought that was your signature. No, signature? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no. I forgot all about this. Oh, I, it, it. Well, when I came home, he was like, well, my work is done. And he got in the car and he drove to Florida. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I th- I it was pretty you, much that. He yeah. pulled up, he goes, your, your mother my, and I, you graduated college. Yeah. The day you came home, he's standing in the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> He goes, I'm divorcing your mom. Looks like my work is done. He looks like my work is done. <laughs> yeah. Get in the car. <laughs> See you in Florida. Honk, honk. <laughs> is he still in Florida? No, he passed away, actually. He's oh, 06. Good times. Thanks for bringing it up, for us. Oh, 06? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a long time ago. Oh, jeez. Sorry. We haven't seen each other for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> God, I forgot about that. Yeah, God. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. No, it's fine. 06. Yeah, but I remember the first time I heard that, I was dying. <laughs> I was Do you have a dying. similar story? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I your, wish. Both your parents still with us? No, my mom passed uh, 2012. Oh, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, no, my parents weren't that organized to be able to pull that one off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been going to Florida my whole... So they're in like central Florida now. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm not a... Florida, I can't... I've been going to Florida my whole life. That's like a big cruise ship. <laughs> it is. So now I got to get the ships. One thing I have been good with... Um, uh, using it for travel because they would fly me in so the agency would book my flights and stuff so it's all taken care of but as long as I arrive and leave at the port I'm supposed to I could like extend it for a little I realized that on my first uh, and only gig I did in Europe I was flying in I met the ship in Bordeaux, France and uh I was going to be on for about 10 days and then we were end up in Amsterdam and they were just going to fly me direct home from Amsterdam. And I was like, can I stay for a little while? <laughs> They're like, yeah, as long as you leave from Amsterdam, we don't care. I was like, holy crap. Because I can get a flight back to Amsterdam from anywhere in Europe. Cheap. You know, right, so just like, right. okay. So I picked a date like three weeks later and uh, I went down to Belgium for a week at the beer belt. See, there you go. There you go. <laughs> went down to Belgium for a week. And then I went down and met a friend in France. I went down to Mallorca, Spain, and then just flew back to uh, Amsterdam for a weekend. And then they flew me back. So it was like all free. So that's that, a nice perk. But, for yeah. yeah, that's a huge one because yeah. over the holidays, I usually work the Caribbean. So I got to meet the ship usually in Fort Lauderdale or Miami. And since my family's down there, I was like, can I fly in? Can I fly in either a few days early or a few days after? They're like, yeah. So I'd get off and see my family and then go home or meet the ship. It's great. So when you go to these different ports that maybe were not on your radar, is there anything surprising about some of these places that you just never suspected? No, I mean, my, I'm not a huge fan of the... I thought I'd like the Caribbean more. 
Okay. I think from growing up in crap weather in Chicago, mm-hmm. the uh, Caribbean had much more appeal because, you know, it's basically built for people who want to sit in the sun and do nothing. Yeah. And drink, which I get, which is <laughs> when I was scraping ice off my windshield. Okay. But after a while, you start to realize that once you peel back the curtain on a lot of those islands, it's really not that nice. I mean, you know, there's a lot of like the 5% own everything. The right. locals are usually pretty poor. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, you get back like trash and it's dirty and they're not living well. Not to get into politics, but I think there was a thing where like a couple of years ago or maybe even last year, like it's pretty much like maybe there's only one beach, if that, that the locals in Jamaica can even use. Yeah. You know, that's just awful. That yeah. is like... And you see that I mean, they don't have much. Right. And culturally, I mean, historically, they all have pretty much the same story. I mean, they were all, there was the Caribbeanians who lived there for a thousand years. The Spanish came and killed everybody. And then they, you know, had plantations. So they brought in slaves from Africa to work in the plantation, the rubber and the sugar and whatever. And, and for the next couple hundred years, they were fought over by either the French, the Dutch, the Americans or the British. And that's just it stayed that way right. you know so it's just kind of like and that's it so there's yeah. no like real historical stuff to go look at I mean there's maybe some forts usually some old Spanish forts there I was just in Puerto Rico the Bob Marley house yeah or something old colonial okay. stuff but but other than that it's a lot of it's been wiped out and so culturally how about, much. How, and then food wise and I'm, I like food and it's like okay I like, like food. the good fish yeah. You know, a good fish and then, you know, jerk chicken. Right. But after that, <laughs> how about yeah, the rum is good. The rum is good. I went to Cuba, yeah. which was really interesting. Yeah, okay. But good rum there. Say outside of the Caribbean, let's talk about Europe. Is there okay. anywhere in Europe that you kind of thought, wow, I, this is not what I expected of this place? Yeah, like uh, traveling on my own. I remember going to Krakow, Poland, which okay. uh, I didn't know much about. I mean... I mean, I knew basically little things or some, but I don't know. I thought it was much more beautiful than I thought it was. I thought it was because everybody talks about how beautiful Prague is, and it is. But I think uh, Krakow is just as beautiful, and it's not as touristy, and it's cheaper. Okay. And but Warsaw was wiped out during the war, so Warsaw was kind of flattened and and had to be rebuilt. But they preserved Krakow because the ghettos. I think that's where they because Auschwitz is right outside of Krakow, which was a depressing day you need vodka after that day <laughs> but uh it's really preserved in the old style of it so that was stuff like that was really surprising yeah know? yeah and i was just in romania for the first time i was there in october which was you know i went up into the hills in transylvania and stuff like that which were really beautiful much i didn't know what to expect yeah yeah but yeah everything's surprising if you look for it i mean but the Caribbeans, like after a while, they they start to run together. After a while, I was like, "What island is this? Saint what? Is this Saint yeah, Thomas? Yeah, or yeah. Saint John? Or I don't know. There's jerk chicken <laughs> and some band butchering Bob Marley over there. I, I can't remember where we're at. Although so, Saint Bart's is nice. Okay. I, I went there in a really Saint high Bart's, end, but it's big money. You know, it's, I've been to uh, Saint John, Saint Thomas, Saint Martin. St. Martin, I've been to both sides of St. Oh, is it yeah, St. Martin? Yeah, me too. Yeah, both sides. The French and the, the Dutch. The French and the Dutch side. What a difference, man. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah, the Dutch side was, and it's been a while since I've been there. They had just had some major hurricane or storm that they went through, and the, the Dutch side was just mangled. It was demolished. Oh, really? And the French side looked like nothing happened to it, <laughs> you know? And it was, uh-huh. yeah, and it was perfect, <laughs> and it was you know, of course, it was strange because all the street signs were in French, and <laughs> there was a Kentucky Fried Chicken, and like, oh yeah, you see all it's the American, yeah, yeah, you see all the American food brands, but then you see all the signs in French, and then you're in the middle of the Caribbean. So mm-hmm. uh, it was a, it was a kind of an odd one for me, but yeah, St. Bart's is is beautiful. Haven't I mean, been to St. Bart's, yeah. It's pretty exclusive, though. That's that's one of the reasons. I mean, like most ships don't stop there. The, the one I did was on a line called the uh, Crystal. Which is another six star, really high end. And even then, there wasn't, we had to like tender in, we had to dock outside. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no docks, so we had to get on the small boats, the light mm-hmm. boats, and come in and taxi in and out. But it, it was nice, though. It was nice. Well, Very the, French. The new Virgin cruise line sounds exciting. Yeah. 
So if they, they offer you that, they keep desperately trying to make cruising cool, right? And younger, right? Okay, um, it's a hard sell to a lot of younger people, but you know, if they can do it, if anybody can do it, maybe they can pull it off, right? Yeah, if there's anyone that can do it, it'd be them. Yeah, but I mean, other places like in Asia that I was really surprised. I love Hong Kong. Hong Kong, I really love a lot. Vietnam, I really like. I've been there a couple times. I hear I hear nothing but positive things about Vietnam. It was I haven't been to Vietnam. It was really interesting. Really, it's really cheap. Yeah, getting around. I mean, the prices are really low, and uh, but beautiful beaches and and jungle and things to see and you know. I remember going to Hanoi. I went to the Hanoi Hilton and saw McCain's flight suit on the wall. And, okay. Yeah, but his, from a historic aspect. It's where Vietnam's an interesting place because we go to the one place as an American and it's like where we lost and didn't come out right, looking right, good. Right. And then we go through a tour and it's like, this was uh, a huge fortress that was here, but it was uh, destroyed in the American War. And you just like slink a little <laughs> lower in your chair. Like, I don't feel sorry. bad in Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they lost there too. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they'll let you for, they won't forget it. Nope. I did a tour of Biloxi, a press tour. Of the Bay or this, you know, they were trying to promote it after Katrina and stuff had wiped everything out. Because they got the brunt of it there. New Orleans got most of the press because, only because the levees broke. Right. Mm-hmm. If the levees had held, it wouldn't have been, you know, half as bad. But, uh, but the real eye of the storm and the power went through like Mississippi and like Biloxi and all that. So they were trying to promote it and we went there. And everybody was very nice, but. It's weird when you think, uh, man, I took a tour. They wouldn't say, one tour guide, she didn't say, they wouldn't use the term civil war. It's a weird thing. They would say like the war between the states or somebody said, and the war for states' rights. Oh. Uh, that was, yeah. <laughs> war for states' rights. War for, it's like, okay, there's whitewashing. I don't know, I'll hold my hand up. You mean the Civil War, right? That was that one. Is that the one you're talking about? It's been 130 years. Maybe you could. Yeah, no, you they, could let that go. The war for states' rights. I was like, yeah, the right to own a human being. Right. Is that one of your rights? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I'm going to keep it to myself. Yeah. So it's interesting. I'm like this. I was just in going through Romania and just seeing uh, just the likenesses of what. Uh, when you see history everywhere, you realize just America is just a big, it's all a test, man. We're just younger. That's it. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. We totally. couldn't even make it 100 years without having a civil war that nearly destroyed it all. Right. So yeah. people are just yeah. like, I have no reason to believe that, you know, it can hold together. I mean, I've seen no evidence of, I remember touring a castle once in Germany and asking the guy, it was like, how long did the family who ran all this how long were they in power? She said about 450 years. I was like, 450 years? America's only it's 250 or something. Years. Yeah. Right. And they're like, we, we probably think it'll always be, I'm sure as hell those people thought it'll always be this way. Right. It'll always, especially when you were lucky to live to 30 back right. then. Yeah. You know, so how many generations was that? So that's it's like, why they're always going to be in charge until one day they're not. That's probably why the bicentennial was such a big deal. It's like, yeah. look how far we've come. <laughs> It is amazing going to places like Croatia or something. You know, it was when I was born, it was Yugoslavia. It was part of. Then they had this huge war in the '90s against Serbia, and then, yeah. you know the the whole thing broke apart. And they were, mm-hmm. and then going through Romania, they were, they had a dictator, and you know, basically their thing yeah. was make Romania great again. Is that and that's how he rode in on that wave? And then all of a sudden, he's gone, and now and then the Soviet Union's gone, and that was. They probably thought it was always going to be. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And I how went, long did the Soviet Union last? Like, I went to sixty years. Yeah, maybe? I went to West Berlin. Uh, that first trip in '89, and I stayed with a guy who had grew up there, and I said, "I oh, said, so you think this wall is ever coming down?" He's like, "No, nah, I don't see it." <laughs> and then and what, six what months he, later, I watched the TV. They're smashing it. Right. it <laughs> Oh my God! I was just there. Yeah, I went through it. I went to Checkpoint Charlie. And I did all that wow. stuff. Wow! The wall was just a weird thing, you know, because the subway underneath was laid out before yeah. the yeah. war, so the subway still went through under East Berlin, and there was these. They called them ghost stops. There was no nobody there. Okay, no so people. they were sealed on they the were surface. Just empty. Yeah, they were just empty, 
and it was just like desolate and quiet and then all of a sudden it would come back again into West Berlin and then there'd be people again. It was the weirdest, strangest thing and now going back, it's like Berlin is it's wild. It's like one of the hippest cities in, yeah. and ironically, Germany has become like one of the most liberal, tolerant and diverse countries yeah. in, the, in the world. Yeah. Now, some would say more than here. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty, it's pretty diverse. Yeah, yeah. Which... It's yeah. weird. I mean, you know, now we're talking politics, but we had such no, a hand. I mean, no, we had a big really. hand in, in making it become that way. Sure. Our presence there and all that. And and that for us to just be like the total, op- almost the opposite now. Is but to know ridiculous. history, you see that just, you know, they thought... Europeans especially, they've been through every different kind of government. They've had kings, they've been through, whether it's socialism, communism, democracies, social democracy, you know, socialist kind of, they've seen everything. Everything. So just like, nothing seems to last, you know, they go through waves, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like, and then you hear about all the empires, it's like the, there were the Romans, and then there was the Ottomans had this. And you go through the giant mosque in Istanbul and you realize, oh, why is there a Christian symbol over here? Well, it was the Roman Catholics built it and then the Muslims came and they took over and then they turned it into a mosque. Oh, they so remodeled it. They remodeled it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> hey, think about that. The ch- there's a church down the street for me, right over here on the end of the block. It was a, uh, it was a Catholic church or some, like a Protestant or something. And then for like 20 years, the Hare Krishnas had it. And now it's a synagogue. Wow. So it's just like... <laughs> there you go. Because <laughs> I walked by and they tried to recruit me. Was, Are you Jewish? I was like, nah, I can't, I can't even pass. <laughs> I thought I could. I had a baseball hat on, I had shades. They saw me coming, man. But so, yeah, you realize it's just a building, man. You never... Whoever's in charge, that's, yeah. that's who your God is now. It's really... And these things flow and ebb and... Hey, when my parents were born, there was 48 states. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we always just assume there's going to be 50? That's right. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, why would there be, why not 55? Why not 30? Why not go back to 49? Yeah. And as it gets more divided, I mean, I have no, I'd like to see it stay together, but I mean, why should it? I mean, it just, nothing's written down and this is all a big test. Right. We're all, you know, it's all a big test. If you have a product, service, or event that you'd like to bring attention to, we can help. This podcast reaches thousands of listeners in over 100 countries every week. Imagine hearing your ad in this spot, just like you're hearing this one right now. Sponsor an episode and get the exposure you deserve. For more information, go to DesertOasisRoom.com and click on Services. This episode is sponsored by the Tiki Bar T-Shirt Club, where their monthly T-shirt designs pay tribute to a Polynesian bar or restaurant from days long past. Each design is available for a limited time and will never be produced again. For the collectors out there, be sure to check out their subscription program, where they offer a discounted 3, 6, or 12-month plan, or you can always buy shirts one at a time. For more information and to check out this month's shirt, visit TikiBarTshirtClub.com. This podcast is brought to you in part by the Tiki Tea, a family-owned and operated tropical drink bar in Los Angeles, California. Come get their house specialty, The Ray's Mistake, for only $6 on Wednesdays until 9 p.m. For more information, check out their website, tiki-ti.com. This podcast is also brought to you by Steadfast Pomade, a strong-holding, medium-bodied styling product for men and women, which leaves your hair looking slick, neat, and shiny with a clean, fresh scent. Order yours today at steadfastpomade.com. So, what are the ladies like on the cruises? Well, those are, that's why the, another reason the love boat is just crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. If you're single, it's the worst place to be. Okay. Because, I mean, it's mostly all couples and families. Right. I mean, there's right. hardly any single people. They try to do single group meetups or, you know, every, they'll have like a five o'clock happy hour, like LGBTQ meetup or something. And I'm, I can't imagine many people go. And, I mean, yeah. And also, if you are single on a ship. What, Why are you there? I mean, the crew is like, they're hooking up with each other. Okay. Because they're, I mean, you're on board a long time. Right. Yeah. But if you try to have a one night stand or something on a ship as a passenger, I mean, you're stuck on board with them for a week. <laughs> It's not like you can just go home 
yeah. and never see them again. You're right. going to see them at the right. buffet. You're going to see right. them everywhere. Everywhere. And then if you try to like meet in somebody else, they're going to see you trying to hook up with somebody else. And just like now you're stuck with it. I have a buddy who's a pilot for a major airline. And he told me the same thing about the crew. He says, yeah, everybody's screwing each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. Plus, especially the younger ones. I mean, they're in their 20s and hooked, it, you know. Well, it's, you, you put know, enough like, 20-somethings in a confined space for long enough. I mean, he says, you know, they, they fly to some somewhere far away. Mm-hmm. And because of regulations, they can't fly back. They got to stay over. The whole crew stays over. And they all, the first thing they do is hit the bar. They all get drunk. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, so, you know, you get to know each other and you're, you see each other all the time. And. It's lonely, man. It's yeah. lonely out but that, there. That's though. a long 11 hour flight. Yeah. Not talking to anybody the next day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, me as a performer, I mean, I'm not supposed to like, I'm not okay. supposed to be in guest rooms and they're not supposed to be in mine. And okay. so it's really kind of. Right. There's not a, there's not much of an upside for me, for me. So <laughs> not that I'd want to, but you know. It's just a, you're on a, on a boat, not spending any money for a week. Yeah. Okay. And that's the uh, upside. hopefully get to some good places. And the theaters, are nice. Okay. I mean, I'll go to these big, beautiful, like some of them are too big for comedy, I think. Sure. Unless there, it could be 800 to 1,000 seat theater. That's a lot of people. That is. And that's a big room and if, and if it's a balcony, it's a high ceiling. You know, comedy needs a low ceiling and a roof. You need, you know, those laughs get lost up in the ether. Man, you know, so. 150 to 250, that's nice. Yeah. If, it, if it's full and everyone's oh, ready to have a good time. some of them have like a lounge or something. Right. Like some of these big, Royal Caribbean ships that are new that are like massive. Yeah, the, the massive. mega ships are like six thousand passengers. They have an actual comedy club on there. Oh wow! So you're actually working with a couple other comics, and I've never done it. I'd like to because I never get to work with any other. That sounds comics. like something that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. And I think you're doing more nights uh, a week and just a lot more sets, but they're shorter sets. Like I'll do in a seven day cruise. At least in Holland, America, I'm on for seven days, but I'm only working two nights. Oh, I'll geez. have my main show night, which will have an early show and a late show, which are about 45 minutes, and that can be the same set. And then I'll do like usually the last night where I'll split the bill with the other guest performer on that week, who's usually a magician, sometimes a singer or something. And I'll do 20 and they'll do 20. Okay. And that's how we'll usually, and that has to be a different 20 than I did. You know, different jokes. Right, because it's going to be the yeah, same Yeah, they're going to see the same people. Yeah. They're not, it's not like you're turning a crowd over. Right. I didn't. I never even thought about that. I just assumed you were doing two sets, two shows a night for no. the whole week. No, but others, yeah. but like all ships are different. Some you'll do like your main night in the showroom and then maybe they'll do like a, a late night thing in, one, in a lounge, in a smaller lounge or something. It's all, everyone's of them's different, but really depends on how much material you have and you can burn with one crowd without turning them over right so I was on a boat with that they had to divert off of one of the ports I was having some bad weather and so we ended up spending that extra day out at sea and they had to cobble together a show with they had the stand up guy come in and then they had another guy come in and they threw this game show together real quick and the, the the comic was using some of the material from the night before that I yeah. that I'd seen. I I felt bad for the guy because you could tell he was hurt and he was trying to keep the crowd lively and people were already upset because they couldn't go into port and yeah we're all stuck on the ship now right we had that we had an extra day because coming back I've had that up a couple times we were supposed to coming back from Antarctica it was like four days at sea and we were going to stop in the Falkland Islands. And this was the rough four days. This was like up and down and like water splashing over my porthole, my window and stuff. It was rough. So we're ready to get off this thing. So, and I was working with three other guest performers because we're all on for two weeks at a time. Once you go there, you can't stop and pick more people up. So right. we, we had a, there was four of us and I was working with three Brits and they were all great. And we had a great time. And of course, you know, we've been boozing it up or, we got free unlimited booze on this. This is a high end, all inclusive. It's dangerous, you know. So, <laughs> but but now we're at the end of it, and four days of like up and down the rough seas. And since the Falklands are the UK, they were just like can't wait to. There's like one pub. It was going to be a Sunday. We were going to watch soccer all day. We were going to like. There's a store. They were going to buy all their British teas and. And crisps or whatever they were gonna do, <laughs> and then the 
right like hours before we were supposed to get there and like uh the captain gets on it's it's gonna be it's too rough to dock yeah and uh we're gonna have to skip it and we're just like oh, oh man because then it was like two more days at sea to get to uh. uruguay so and when you got like, to Uruguay, were you were you just all? Were you he legs? actually made a bonus stop to Punta del Este, which is kind of like it's beach. It's like Miami Beach. Oh, okay. So it was the summer down there. So it was February, I think it was. So it was super hot. So we just gone. <laughs> Last time we got off the ship, it was at icebergs, and now right. we're and now we're in beach. It was like Miami but, Beach, you know. So wow. we we had a day at the beach, and that was nice. Then went to Montevideo, and then uh, Buenos Aires, and then are your off. legs all wobbly? Like no, if, not too bad. Okay. I wasn't. Not like if, not like being and on I a got, small boat for three days. That was a big fear of mine because I got seasick. I, I have a history of seasickness and, okay. mo- and motion sickness and stuff. And and as some of the rough nights we've had, I, I've never gotten sick. Knock on, whatever. But yeah, but I, a couple nights I thought I was gonna lose it. But you just try to be careful. So are you still you know. doing cruise ships? Uh, yeah, I just got off one two weeks ago. Okay. But I don't have any book right yet. I'm, things seem to fall in, at least with some of these lines. They'll do last minute and stuff. So I, I, I can pretty much. I bet that I'll I'll be back in Alaska. <laughs> <this summer. laughs> I'm kind of over it, but Alaska at least is pretty. I mean, yeah. it's, and it's again, I like to hike, and so nature wise, it's great and it's clean and it's. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. nice to be up there, and it's not really. It's a different crowd. It's a different crowd that goes to the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. You know, people are up there. It's a lot of families, and a lot of people are in right. nature, and they want to see whales and and right. stuff. And How's the seafood up there? The salmon is amazing. Yeah, and they never s- stop shoving it down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> Have some salmon. Try some salmon. Have you, have you had the salmon? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've had it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Tripped over three salmon walking into this place. You been to uh, Puerto Rico? Yeah, I was just there. Okay, so in San Juan. We go. We stop in San Juan every San Juan. week. So I stayed in Old San Juan for my anniversary a few years ago. We were there for ten days, and I just remember after five days saying to Stephanie, "She's like, where do you want to eat?" And I said, "Whatever we eat, I'm all mafungoed out." Yeah, <laughs> it's like mafungo everywhere you go. I'm done with Mofongo. Can, can we get a cheeseburger or something? It's like, <laughs> right. I met an actress I know that was living down there because her family is there. And we went out. She took me out to like a nice restaurant there. But I can't remember the name of it. Got to get that from her. But it was really like a locals. It was yeah. a pretty well-known yeah. place. But like off. It wasn't near. We got, we got out of old San Juan. You just had to cross a bridge. And right, I right. forget what the neighborhood is over there. But it was really, really good. It was pricey for, for Probably, Puerto Rico, uh, but I was so anxious to have something different. Was, Condado Beach. Oh God, I can't remember. That's outside. I'd have to ask her. That's outside of you. You kind of cross over a bridge. And it's just outside of Old San Juan. Right. When yeah. you were in Cuba, did you eat at anyone's house? Did you do any of that? Yeah, stuff? I stayed in someone's house. Oh, cool. And this was two thousand nine or ten. So I had to. They hadn't opened it up yet. I had to sneak in through uh, Cancun. Sneaky seagull. So mm. I went. I just flew to Cancun. I'd heard the, what you had to do. You had to like bring cash because once you get there, you know your ATM doesn't work. Nothing. Your bank cards, your credit cards don't work. And I, so I got, I just got off in Puerto Vallarta, went to a. It's 2009. That's what. It, and I went and checked the Cubana Airlines schedule. And there was one flight leaving later that day. I said, "Can I get on it?" They said, "Come back in an hour." So I came back in an hour, and they're like, "Yeah, we can get you on." And I had to buy a quote unquote tourist visa. Which is like basically this piece of paper that they put in my uh, for like twenty five bucks, and they put that in my passport. So they stamped that piece of paper and not my passport. Not your passport. That was going to be a question. Yeah. So I got in, and I got in this Cubana Airlines plane. It was like an old Russian Aeroflot plane. Wow. That was rickety, man. It's just like this came. This is from like Cold War era Eisenhower era plane. It still had the like the. Ashtrays in the armrests yeah. and stuff like that. No, I got I, great video of like the when they fired it up and turned on the air conditioner and all this smoke <laughs> slash steam came into the cabin and I'm looking around like, oh man. Now, I, I imagine people holding chickens. Unfortunately, you know, no, like, well, I, I was only in Havana for like, three nights. No, but on the plane. Oh yeah, on the plane. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. It was fascinating. I thought Cuba was amazing. Uh, I hear it's like a time machine. 
It it's is. like stepping it's, back in time. It's like everything stopped in 1959. Yeah. But again, like he was talking about the silence in Antarctica. When you go down to Cuba, there's no advertising anywhere. Okay. And, and you don't think about it. Like we're just so inundated with it in our field of vision everywhere we go. Like science for Coke or Sony or whatever it is, or movies or anything. There, it's nothing. The only signs are government. It's propaganda, basically. But there's no products, no nothing advertised, and it's really. How are you treated as an American there? It's fine. Nobody. Okay. I mean, there's tourists from everywhere there. We're the only ones who are like, sure, banned from going. And you see what, I mean, the, the embargo and stuff. It's it's ridiculous. It's the dumbest. So you get there, it's like, okay, we've been doing this for 50 years. The people are still poor. Castro is still in power, or his brother. Mm -hmm. It's still common. It's like, who won here? Who's like, it's ridiculous. Right. And everybody goes down there. There's Canadians, there's Europeans. Right. Germans right. go there. Yeah, everybody goes yeah. there. And so it's, it's just all kind of silly. Um, you know, just, it's, but it was it was really kind of cool, and the people I found were really, I mean, they had great spirit, and they do the best with what they got. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, they don't have much, but they 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 seem they were very friendly, very friendly. But good rum, I went and drank. Everybody's you go, you go drink where uh, Hemingway made this bar famous. Yes, Hemingway made this bar famous. It's like okay, Hemingway drank at a lot of bars here. <laughs> got it. But where the I went was the El Floridita, where the yeah. daiquiri was invented or something. You go oh, that, there. That's um, it's all tourists in there. Yeah. yeah, like the locals would never. I would still go though. Oh, of course, go. you got yeah. to. And take my picture with the statue, the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Yep, I got one. But yeah, you realize that most of the places you go, like the locals could never afford to to go. Okay. And you realize it was the only place I've been. There's two forms of money. There's like the locals get their money, and then there's something called the convertible peso. Which is tied one to one to the U.S. dollar, which is what we get. So, if you can get the locals' pesos, I mean, you can eat where they eat, which is dirt cheap. It's nothing, but it's almost like food rationing and stuff like that. Oh, it's almost okay. like their version of food stamps. It's a way to control their, because they they don't they're not using our money. It's a weird, really strange thing. But you go to these old hotels. Because I had uncles from New Jersey and stuff that used to go there in the 50s. It was Vegas. That yeah. Was, that place was jump. It was Yeah, nuts. yeah, yeah. And you see these old hotels that it's kind of faded. But you'll go in and it's the original furniture, like the mid-century modern Art Deco stuff. Yeah. That like designers here would freak out about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all vintage, perfect. Right. But right. it's just all kind of faded. Like the original. Oh, that's the original carpet. Yeah, but it's worn out. Was a Trader Vic's there? The, yeah, the, the Polynesian. Polynesian. Same oh. furniture, same glassware, and it's so cool looking. And you just you just trying to imagine in your mind what it must have looked like. Yeah, back then it was just jumping. It was so cool, but you see a lot of those things. It's it's yeah, it's pretty amazing. And there was this one bouncer at, at a bar we were at. I went through a friend of a friend, my friend Jerry, who I tried to meet you. With. He knew a producer down there who produced a boxing show. It was a reality boxing show. Like, remember that that was on? I can't remember. Oh, right. Top Fighter uh, or something? I don't remember what yeah, it was. Something like that. But one right. of the boxers was down there with the producer. And I met up with them down there. So we met this one bouncer at a bar. We wanted to go hear music. And the bouncer had been the Cuban heavyweight for some Olympics in the 90s. He was this huge dude. And now he's the bouncer for the... Because you don't get rich being... Right. The, yeah. the one thing I wish I would have done is gone to a baseball game there. Oh, yeah, yeah. it just wasn't. I didn't. Yeah, the schedule didn't work out. But it was. But that's what I really wanted to see. But there's. They were saying it's like there. You have to return the foul balls because they don't have as many baseballs. Oh, so you can't just walk. With them. Can't keep it. <laughs> yeah, they're just like. You got to be a little stingy with the, with the stuff. But. So I just. That's just one thing I never thought I would have to take yeah. for granted. You know what I mean? And the cars, you know. Yeah. Yeah, You'll they see one that's this vintage, beautiful 50s car and then another one that's like duct taped together with right. house paint and just, <laughs> the, but somehow it's working. Like the kid that drove me from the airport, man, I, I don't know what this car, it, it must have been made up of 50 different parts. It, it was, I can't even describe it. He had painted it purple with like obviously house paint and 
But and, it ran. It ran. And the Russian cars are just hideous, right? Oh, yeah. the I forget what they're called. They have these little boxy yeah, things. Right. and Yeah, those are everywhere. A lot, of, a lot of VWs and stuff. But yeah, mostly those Russian cars and like the, but then this beautiful old 50s Cadillac will go by and I'm like, yeah, wow. Yeah. But they do the best with what they can. They've kept it yep. alive, but it's really interesting. Yeah, I wish more people would go. I don't know how what they, if they restricted it more. I think you can fly out of LAX now. Yeah, directs. Yeah. Yeah. Because we know a few people who've gone. We do. But yeah, I'd go back. If I think there's, didn't, didn't that change though? Like, did it? Well, Trump like, came in and they, yeah. they shut down. Oh, did some they of shut it, some but, of it down? So you think you have to go on some sort of like church visa or yeah. something? Yeah. Well, I, I or did. Or you can sneak it again like I did. Yeah. I did know friends yeah. that did what you did. They flew out of Cancun. Yeah. And I know somebody that flew out of TJ. They just parked on the American side, walked over, and yeah. took a cab over to the airport and flew but out. But now of there. I, guess, I guess they're, uh, I went there. Pre Airbnb, but now I guess they're on Airbnb. You can get oh. them. But I stayed. I had like a Lonely Planet guide. That's all I had. Yeah, I had nothing yeah. booked. I just showed up at the airport with nowhere to stay. Wow! And I just pointed to the. You know, my Spanish is not that great. And this is pre Google Translate, yeah. pretty much. Wow. And the internet was not. You weren't going to get Wi Fi down there that good. So wow. uh, I just asked this kid to take me to this, <laughs> this right. spot that was recommended because I wanted to stay in somebody's house. Okay. And, uh, of course, that one was booked, but then they pointed me down the street to this other lady who, and I had to sign this little, it was this little old lady who lived with her son and grandson, and she spoke no English, and her son spoke a little. But, uh, yeah, they gave me the spare room. It had one light, like a naked bulb, like hanging in it, and a bed. And that's where I stayed for three nights. That's awesome. In their house. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Did you eat with them and stuff? Uh, just breakfast. Okay. Just breakfast. But yeah, it was really fascinating. But now I guess you can book it on, on Airbnb. It was a big thing in their economy there, of staying, but you had to sign. There's like a special government register you had to sign. And right. of course, government will get their cut. But yeah, it was really, I wanted to have that experience. It was great. It was great. And I never, it was safe, you know. It's yeah, yeah. Safer than walking around here, probably. Yeah. So all the continents... Literally around the world, right? Yeah. Funkiest toilets. <laughs> I know uh, what you're alluding to because I listened to the episode. Oh, I'm not going to talk about that. But okay. It's the funkiest toilets. But, it, well, I mean, in cleanliness in terms of that, because, yeah, India is pretty rough. Okay, I mean, yeah. In terms of nastiest, yeah. I mean, that would be like a hole in the ground. It's right. Squat sure. toilets. I mean, that's common. I took a train in India. We took the night train from. Bombay or Mumbai to uh, Goa and we were in the first class and if that's the first class man I can't wow yeah I could never get used to the squat toilets yeah and uh, you go in there and, and one of them, and there's just a hole yeah. that goes right down to the tracks I mean right. you can oh, see that's the, funny. Oh, okay. you can see the track the ground just whizzing right by wow. so yeah it can't smell I've great if you that. live along yeah. the uh, along the tracks that's tough but the best toilets definitely Japan we are way Behind yeah, yeah, the toilet yeah. technology, but I mean they are well, I, I so think clean you, you, and you safe. You can get those here if you, you know. Yeah, they're high end. They're big, yeah. money. but they're super high end here. Yeah. But even so, the high end homes and hotels don't have them. Oh, right. with the spray, and then, then they got the little fan, and then they got uh, oh, warm seating. I listened yeah, to the Weinhold, the Matt Weinhold episode. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. was great. Especially when the thing about the the chime that sounds like a flush. Yeah, you don't really right. want to waste the water. It's a button that said, yeah, it said flush sound. So you would just hit it, and it would just cover up the noise of any... That episode makes it. me want to go to Japan. And the, the it's thing great. Is, it's on my list. Yeah. I just haven't gone, and I've actually had dreams that I was there and lost oh, in yeah. Japan, right? And and I I keep saying, okay, I'm going to put that on the top. The next time I travel, it's going to be the next place I go. And then I listened to that episode, and I thought... It's well, pretty amazing. It sounds awesome. Yeah, it's really great. And I don't, you like sushi? You like... Love sushi. Okay, well then... Yeah. You're good to go. And it's so, I mean, it's clean and safe. It's cleaner in here. Yeah. I mean, so, the Japanese think we live in the third world. Yeah. yeah they yeah. come over here and they can't believe, they see people sleeping in the streets and right. just like, they're like, ugh. Right. We thought America was going to be. Yeah. So much yeah. yeah. It changes the dynamic of Little Tokyo when and it's surrounded harm- by tents. Yeah. And there's a harmony that they all live in. I mean, people pick up after themselves. They, they follow the rules. They, it's the only way that they can get by. You know, they, you go by like Tokyo's 20 million people but then you go on the sidewalk and there's a little 
taped off thing on the sidewalk, say smoking area, and people will stand in that little painted on right. area it, and dispose of your cigarette butts here, and they will. Is it like Singapore where there's like no graffiti also? No, it's not that. You know, Singapore okay. is a little more. <laughs> yeah, Singapore is it's, it's just a city that is a country. It's a weird. But the difference, too, is that in Singapore, it's because they have such strict rules and laws yeah. that the penalties are pretty horrific. Right. But in Japan, it's more cultural. Right? Yeah, you just... Okay. There was a big thing in the last World Cup uh, that the Japanese fans, they couldn't... That people loved them because they pick up after themselves. Like, yeah. after the game was oh, over, right, right. they pick up their trash and leave, and everybody thought, well, that's so great, and... Their thinking was, well, why wouldn't you pick up after yourself? Yeah, you the, can't argue with it. Yeah, right. There's no. Right. And so, oh, yeah, horrible. they're just the well behaved. I mean, they're the best tourists. Like when I was waiting tables and stuff in Chicago, we'd always, you'd always want the Japanese tourists. They're the best. They sp- you know, they spend money and they're quiet and they're polite and well behaved. And they're and, quiet. So the rock. <laughs> When They're fantastic. Was, when travels. he was a wrestler, said that when he would wrestle in Japan, it was strange how quiet it was because they would watch the match mm-hmm. and then they would clap for the winner after it was over. <laughs> right? He said he said it was dead quiet. People aren't screaming and yelling the way they are here. Yeah, that's, I've interviewed some magicians that's that I've worked freaky. with, and that's like certain crowds. I think he said like in, in India or uh, somewhere in Asia. Yeah, he thought he was dying. He was getting no applause, no nothing for each oh, yeah. trick and stuff like that. Right. And then afterwards, he said, that was the one most wonderful show. He's like, really? Because nobody did. He goes, they, they didn't applause because they thought they'd be interrupting. Like they waited till the end. Wait till the applause, end, yeah. But like each, they just sat there very politely. So watching. you don't have to worry about hecklers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Can you imagine, comedy, doing, can you imagine, imagine. doing stand-up like that? <laughs> like you'd be done in six minutes. Yeah. You'd be like, okay, that was supposed to last 45 minutes, but uh, it's been eight. It's funny. Princess had a ship that they were, they retrofitted for the Chinese market and it's only over there now. And, uh, but they had to change certain aspects of it because the bars were dying because the Chinese really don't drink that much. They don't drink cocktails. Really. Okay. Maybe they'll have a whiskey and a beer or a beer or something with food, but they don't like sit at a bar and just sit there and drink cocktails. They just don't. So the bars were making nothing. So they converted some of the bars to uh, hot water stations because they always want hot water for their tea and their right. noodles and whatever. So they're just right. like, just go get hot water. It's over there. <laughs> Might as well. So the bars were dying, but the, the shops and the casinos were killing it. Okay. Oh, the casinos. they love been. gambling. Right. They, yeah. they gamble and they shop like And they right? shop, yeah. So the shops were raking it in and the casinos were doing great, but the bars were dying. So it's just these little That's things. That's hilarious. And, yeah. You it's like it's like Vegas that. casinos. They had to change them for the Asian market. Like yeah. certain colors they don't like. And right. Yeah. Numbers yeah, they, are unlucky. Now yeah. you had to, like, they had to change the MGM. So yeah. It didn't look like yeah. you were being eaten. Walking yeah. through the lines. Yeah. Walking through yeah. the lion's yeah. mouth. Yeah. So the, it's interesting how those things change. But again, they're learning other things to tra- traveling more. Yeah. But it's it's interesting. What is the thing that you would say that you learned the most from all of your travels, being an American abroad? I think probably that uh, I ask my interviews this question all the time. Like, how has it changed you? And I think, like, it's interesting to, to meet. The more people you meet, the more you realize just how much we have in common. Uh, people mm-hmm. really just kind of generally want the same stuff. They just want a safe place for their kids. They want, like, some work and to feel like, they have some opportunity in life and not, it's not that different anywhere. Anywhere. Everybody's just trying to get to work. That's it. Yeah. That's what you learn living in a city, like living in New York or something. It's just, it's hard to be sheltered there. You're going to get on the train and there's going to be every different kind of race and language around you and sexual orientation or whatever. And you realize, oh, we're just all trying to get to work. Nobody gives a crap. Just get out of my way. That's it. <laughs> Just move to the side. That's it. Don't drive slow in the. Don't drive slow in the passing lane. That's it. So that and it's interesting. I think everybody needs to step out of America's culture and our media is so huge. Yeah. And overpowering here, and it's so self-centered here that um, once you like watch the news in another country, you realize, oh wow, you get different takes on stuff yeah. and. 
and it's like, boy, we don't get like reporting like this, and we don't get. It's it just opens your mind up, and just to talk to people and, and realize just how much we, our policies affect everyone around the world, and we have bases in what over eighty countries and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And, but people don't vote when they vote. They don't think about that. How who do we elect matters because we don't care about other people's politics at all usually in this country where they have to they monitor ours really yeah yeah fast but it's weird how our culture in terms of pop culture has just gone like i've never been anywhere in the world where i couldn't just get a burger somewhere or and hear michael jackson right <laughs> or something right. and our music is everywhere it's everywhere everywhere so you realize what a strong influence that is yeah. around the world. But I don't know, somebody, we have our waves and maybe somebody else will. Who yeah. knows, in 20 years we might be listening to Chinese music. Who knows, <laughs> who knows. But I mean, just be cool and, okay. uh, you know, meet, get as many experiences as you can, I think, and meet as many people from around the world because, and eat the food. <laughs> just yeah. try to wash your hands be open-minded about the food be open-minded and talk yeah. to yeah and talk to people I say talk, that all the talk time talk to the locals yeah and try new things that's what I say get out there don't let fear scare you off great advice and yeah, for and all, drink all of, the cocktails for all of our listeners out there I'd like to encourage for you you guys to listen to Mike's podcast traveltalespodcast.com yep if you are a an avid travel you will enjoy the content and if you're not an avid traveler you will enjoy the content thank you it's my new favorite podcast thank you i yeah. wish we I, I i feel like we didn't talk enough about tiki i don't well, know what you like to, to talk say. about i don't know what is what's your favorite tiki location like in terms of say the best architecture that's still left intact oh so okay we, that be, we can answer these questions for you um so my, Tahiti or something like that? No, actually, the I think the best ar architecture left intact is the Maikai in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Oh. Yeah, it's it's the last of the grand tiki temples from the heyday of tiki in the mid-century. Next time you're there, you have to go. Fort you Lauderdale. have to go. Fort La it's fantastic. What's it called again? The Maikai. The Maikai. The Maikai? It's fantastic. Maikai with a K. Maikai, okay. Yeah. Um, I was just in Florida. It's on Highway 1. But, but if, you're, if you're on cruise ships, you're going to be back in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Yeah, so you got to go there, and it's amazing. Even the th bathrooms are themed. You know, lots of A frames. Lots right. of it's got a great garden. Lots of great big garden. tiki's. That sounds and great. And it's you know it's been there since great what, tropical 1958? cocktails. There was a place in yeah, I outside, think so. There was a place outside of Chicago that still might be. I think the Halakahiki or something. Yeah, Halakahiki they're, they're still, still there. there. It's still, still there. there? Yes. Oh my god. Yes. God, man, still that there. place goes way back. Yeah. So um, yeah, so that's. Probably the best for architecture. Uh, my favorite tiki spot is here in L.A., the Tiki Tea. Love the Tiki Tea. Yeah. And, uh, Love that That's place. just because it's a nice little hole in the wall with a lot of history and family run. And you just you feel like you belong. You know, it's a great place. And a bit of the one in uh, the valley. The Tonga Hut. Tonga Hut. Yeah. yeah. Another good one. I like it's, that one. It's all right. Um, what about best country to go to to get the full-on legit... Okay, so... Is this Fiji, you think? Or? No, I, I'm going to tell you my favorite place to travel is the Cook Islands. Okay, I only I, stopped there once in a, on a I layover. Love, I love going to the Cook Islands. I love Rarotonga. Yeah. And the reason why I love it so much is the people in the Cook Islands are really genuine. So, as a tiki guy, and I alluded to this earlier that I, I enjoy going to tropical places. Yeah. And I love going to Hawaii, but Hawaiians, for the most part... Hate us? Hate tourists. <laughs> yeah. it's, they, they have shirts that say, tourists go yeah. home. They have hey, at least they put you up, can pass a little better than me. I, I can, but... Yeah, they, they, they shove... And they do treat me... Howley, go home. They will treat me a little bit different because they think I'm local, but... Yeah. But um, they don't appreciate their tourists. And I can understand why. I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, I don't get it. I do understand why. Yeah, I get it too. But... You go to the Cook Islands, and they thank you for for coming and visiting their islands, and they take a special interest in you when you show respect towards their culture. So if you try to learn some of the local words, or you ask, you know, what what's the right thing to do when I you know when I do this or do that? What's the custom here? They love that. 
and they appreciate tourists. They thank you for visiting their islands. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a very welcoming place. I've never experienced any localism, and it has all the beauty of Tahiti without the price. So I'm or the tood. The or the tood. I haven't been to Tahiti either. Oh, that's okay, one, that's interesting. That's one of those that I always wanted to. I figured I'd wait till uh, you bring a girl. Right. <laughs> those tropical islands. Uh, being a solo dude on the tropical island is not. I went with Jerry and and Graham and a couple other people to. Uh, no, Graham didn't come with us, but he uh, to Maui. Oh, and yeah. like four dudes surfing and. Yeah, it's all couples. It's all like honeymooners and yeah, yeah. And it, after nine o'clock, there was nowhere to go well, out. I mean, it was just like the locals' places don't want you. The uh, the other places, all the couples are all in bed. It's so like, hey, where are the uh, ladies so, here? Or, They're know, not here. Honolulu's not so bad as oh no, like, that's more regular city. people work it's like there. Going to right, right, Lauderdale, yeah, exactly. So I'm not a huge fan of Honolulu for that reason. But it's better than Cyprus. Well, yeah, of course. Cyprus. Well, I don't know where you're grading on that scale. The Cyprus scale, I didn't know. It was... Yeah, but Tahiti, I want to go. Yeah, That's I'll a honeymoon the, spot. It's got to be all Pacific. honeymoon. I, I just, I, I really, I guess growing up, it's always been in my head that paradise is a tropical island with sandy beaches. Right. And, you know, that's just always been the thing for me that where I, I really feel also that I'm kind of part of the culture when I'm there. You know, I like to live like a local. I like to assimilate with the locals. I like to do what the locals do, you know. And then after seven days, you're like, I'm not having yeah, conk. I'm d- <laughs> right. I'm done with the locals. <laughs> well, you know, what, what... No more conk or mama f- mafungo. <laughs> no, yeah, no more mafungo. When I come home, it really, it, it opens, every time I travel, it opens my eyes to how much I think we are living the wrong way here in America. Oh, we totally are. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's, yeah. Well, that was the other thing I noticed. That, I mean, we can't, it's unsustainable how we live. I well, mean, what people would say, well, why do they hate us? They don't, they don't hate us for our freedoms, which is a big line that they love to say. They actually kind of envy the freedoms and what we have. It's what we do with it. It's like, why do you guys need so much? It's like, yeah, there's it's, that. It's 5% of the, we make up 5% of the population in the world, but we use up 25% of the resources. Right. That's worth hating us about. Sure, sure. That and the drone bombing. But and other than that. Bombing, <laughs> uh, but even like, but no, know. but it's really, it's just like, you, it's, and then when they see people with, you know, live in a 5,000 square foot house and have three cars, bitch, that the, the world's, you know, the country sucks. It's like, what are you? <laughs> and, well, this, you gotta, this, you this learn to appreciate thing like, things like water coming out of your tap that doesn't make you sick. Exactly. Well, you have a simplified lifestyle. Yeah. The first time you go to Europe and you realize, oh, this this guy's closed for two hours in the middle of the day. Yeah. You're like, maybe, maybe well, and that's, that's, that's cool. That's what I. That's part yeah. of what I mean. Like, I when, need a nap. Yes. Around that time of day, there's yes. a reason it was. <laughs> it's so it's like, hot, and yeah. I need a nap, and and I'm better. The one thing I notice every time I come home is how much everyone is in a hurry here. And so I'll think to myself, we work ourselves to, to death, death in this country. To death. So I'll think to myself, and this is back years ago when I had a regular office job. When I'm going to work, I've got some guy on my ass. I'm going 85 miles per hour on the right. toll road. I'm going 85, and there's some guy on my ass. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, number one, either you're late, number two, you're impatient, or number three, you just can't wait to get to work because. You just yeah. want to, you love to work. And you, I mean, it's not three. Yeah. Well, I can tell you it's, it's usually only one of those threes barring an emergency, which it probably isn't right. It's either he's impatient or he's late or he just can't wait to get to work. Yeah. There's no other reason. Yeah. Right. So none of those three things are admirable qualities to me. And I think to myself, he's choosing to live this way and everywhere else I go around the world. No other country lives the way that we, nobody yeah. does that. You know, I mean, it, it's uh, it's amazing how fast you get sucked into it, though. Usually, it takes. I find when I travel, it takes me about a, at least a week of being away before I start getting into oh, out of American speed mode, and uh, we're used to having everything immediately. Yeah. Um, well, even Hawaii island time. Yeah, calling freaks it up. everybody yeah. out, and it, it teaches you patience. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's funny in Africa they would they would their big thing was like twenty minutes. I learned after a while. It's like the bus says it's supposed to be here. The schedule's right. like at one o'clock, and they're like yeah, it's twenty minutes. And then you go back at one twenty, 
Yeah, it's like about 20 more minutes. They realize right. 20 is enough to keep you going. Right, right. Like if they said another hour, you'd be like, an hour? Right. But if they just keep <laughs> leading, oh, I think it's only about 20 minutes. Like, you mother, you know it's not Yeah, 20. yeah, right. You know it's not going. But, but then yeah, you, we're you like Germans alert. freak the hell out. Like in Germany, right. if, if the train's a, a minute late, they'll get in trouble. Right. You know? As someone who's usually on time, I kind of like that. You know, yeah, I, I do like it because it does get frustrating. Well, coming over here today, I was huge that we knocked on your door. At, you know, we rang your bell. Yeah, that we're, at, that we're on time. Yeah. I know. I was, yeah. I was, I was just getting out of the shower on European time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it is. You know, there is that island time. Like so I, had that, Cuban, I had a Cuban uncle down in Miami, and like my aunt married a Cuban guy, and his side of the family used to drive my aunt bananas because, like, you know, the party starts at eight, and of course. My dad's family, they're in there at eight. You know, the Cubans don't show up till 11. You know, <laughs> right. it's just like, son of a bitch. Right. <laughs> and just the way it is, man. It is, every place is completely different. But then, yeah, a place like France or Italy, when if lunch is that good and the wine is that good, yeah, maybe lunch should take two hours. And then maybe we shouldn't yeah, that's walk enough. around. And well, the Americans walking around with cups in their hands all the time. It's like, whether it's coffee or yeah. soda or something. It's like, maybe you should sit down and eat and then put it away. When I went to and Europe, get on with your life. And- I came back angry because I was like, yeah, Europe was great. But like when you're done eating, it's like they won't let you leave. Yeah, yeah. you'll die waiting for the check. Yeah, the you'll check die will waiting never for come. the check. It's like, I got, I got three more things to see today. Let's yeah. go. You got to ask for the check. It'll, but see, again, it'll that, never come. That is the American culture that, like for me, when I say that we're living the wrong way, you know, I learned to stop and smell the roses. You know, when when you are overseas, yeah. To me, it's just like, hey, I know I don't know if I'm ever going to get back here, so I try to enjoy myself while I'm there. I'm never rushed, and I and I purposely don't set up itineraries. I mean, sometimes I do if yeah. there's well, other something, people. If yeah, you go the other that, way. You know? and it's like I don't know when I'm going to be here next, so I want to see everything. Right. And that was like my first. That was my first experience with that. Is that trip to Europe, I was backpacking around and, and I was with a few guys and after a while it just became, we had this plan in our head and every day or every couple of days we we're just moving on to a new thing. It's like, I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore and I'm exhausted and I don't even, I'm taking pictures of churches and towns and I don't know where I'm at. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Right. right. So I will say as I've gotten older, I, it's just become much slower travel. Yeah. And there's yeah. a, it's called the slow travel movement. The more guys are just pick one play and just absorb. That's an it. actual thing at the slow yeah, travel. Yeah, movement. yeah, yeah. Okay. And just okay, so uh, we're learning the slow travel mo- movement. Slow and travel. And the, the beer belts. Beer belts. And the beer beer belts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, just having a deeper experience in one place rather than you know just going that, on, exactly and on, and on and on and on. That's exactly it. Which is yeah. cruise ships are meant to go. Yeah. And just keep going. You keep going, and whether it's just like no, I'm just going to go spend a week in a city. Yeah. Within a yeah. week, you could see, you get a good vibe of the place. Yeah. Two days, you're not going to, what are you going to see? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and you're racing around and just, even Paris, I'll tell people, yeah, you take your day and just, it's very walkable. You know, go, go to the Louvre, go pick the mm-hmm. Eiffel Tower, get your photos, and stuff like And then just take one day where you go into a cafe in a cool neighborhood and just sit there on the sidewalk with a bottle of wine and some food and just watch everybody go by. Yeah, they face that's what the locals do. They and face the street, yeah. to watch the world go by, and you just chill there all day. Yeah. And the wine is cheap, and it's great. Yeah, and, and the food's amazing. The food's amazing, and then that's a civilized. That's that's being human. Well, that's you know, that's other, an important thing to do. That's the other cool thing about Vietnam is you get the Asian cook food, but then yes. you get the French kicking in. Yes, so the bread is really the good. Bread. There. Yeah, and the, the bread. coffee, the bread and the coffee there are really good. So you can thank the wherever the French go. They leave good bread behind. They do. <laughs> they and do. the Italians, like when they went to... Uh, yeah, like Montreal. Yeah, and in Argentina, like in Buenos Aires and stuff, it's like every... The food, I mean, it's steak everywhere. It's right. like, oh my God, the steak everywhere. But if it's either steak, empanadas, or pizza. Yeah, then they do pastas the Italians, down there. Well, pizza and pasta. The, Argentina thinks it's Europe. Yeah, well, there's a huge Italian influence there. Okay. So they'll have a lot of Italian names and stuff. But the gelato is really good there too. Oh, so it's like ah, the Italians. Wherever the Italians went, they brought gelato too, <laughs> and good pasta, right. and wine, right. and the wine in Argentina is really good. Right. Yeah. So that's a cool city too. That was another place I was really surprised how much I liked it. Buenos Aires is great. I haven't been there. Yeah, I'd like to really go there. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's very European city. It's most 
European city kind of in, in South America. But everything's got the Spanish influence down there. But it's just, it's a cool vibe. It's, there's some really yeah. cool neighborhoods. There's so much. See, I got I to gotta do the Europe thing. So we'll see. I'll make an itinerary for you. Okay. And you can ignore it and just go slow. <laughs> exactly. Slow well, travel so moment. we're supposed to do a trip sometime this year, aren't we? We're supposed to. We were going to go to the Big Island. Okay. But maybe we just go to I Tokyo. still haven't been to the Big Island. Oh. I want to go see the volcanoes. There you go. Have volcanoes, you been to Volcanoes no, National I have Park? Not been, I've only been to Oahu. I've been to Maui and Oahu. And that's, that's no, and Kauai. Went to Kauai. Okay. But uh, yeah, the Big Island. I well, want make to see. that your next six. Do all six. Yeah. Or what? Are, there's eight, right? I was just in Maui a few months ago, and, and it's uh, I, I love it. I like it a lot, but I also like when when I travel, I like to feel like I'm outside of the country. You know, yeah. like, it's very American. <laughs> well, Alaska, one, you could do that too. What's that? Alaska, you could do that also. Yeah. Well, my bucket list this year for the Pacific is Palau. Oh. Palau is great, especially if you're a diver. I, that's why I want to go. That's okay. in terms of diving and around the world. It's yeah, it's really well known, and that's that's why I want to go. Yeah. Is Palau the place where they have the the crater filled with jellyfish that are no longer sting? Oh, yeah. Or is that Somebody told me that. No, something? that's um, I just saw this picture. It, it's uh, it's an inland. It's an inland. Uh, they don't. There are no predators. So right. Yeah, over yeah, yeah. Time, yeah. S- a photographer friend of mine who was a guest. She was just showed me photos of that, and I'd never heard of it before. Yeah, it looks so cool. It was on an it's episode of Survivor. Millions of, them. of yeah, yeah, millions. It might of have them. been Palau. Yeah, somewhere, but it, yeah, it's an inland lake. Yeah, that. Uh, oh my gosh! In Belize, I did the deep. Did you do the blue, the blue, blue hole? hole? Yeah. But what do you think of the blue hole? You know, you go so deep that once you're down there, you that don't stuff, see much. It creeps me out. Well, down there, I mean, it's a collapsed cave, so you get stalagmites I don't, I don't like and stalactites looking down and, and not seeing. You swim through that, but. It, when you go that deep, I think it went to about 130 feet. And then and the water has this, like, it had this particulate in it when I was in there. I don't remember. That, that, that was just kind of, it weirded me out. Oh, really? I like seeing the bottom. Where, yeah. Where, where, where. No, I you look too. down and you still don't see, it. it's like space, you know, yeah. you're like. Yeah. But I saw, you know, all the color in life is usually high, closer oh, to yeah, the surface. Oh, yeah, it's closer to the surface. So down there, it just keeps getting dark. It's like a black and white. Movie, but and then you have to go so slow to pressurize. So you and then you have to go up, and the deeper you go, the faster you use your air. Oh yeah. So I was only down there for like fifteen minutes at the bottom, and then you got to make your way back up and slowly. Yeah. That's work. That's it is. So work. They're prettier dives. You kind of do it to say you've done it. Okay. But nobody needs to do it twice, really. No, no. no. You stayed at Key Cocker. Yeah. Did you go out to Goff's Key? No. So I dove Goff's Key. they called it the Blue Channel, I think is what they called it. And then there was a, and then Holchan Marine Preserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holchan. And then I went to. The Stingray City. Sting, you know? uh, yeah, um, Shark Ray Alley. Shark Ray Alley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Stingray City. Did all that. Stingray City is in the, the Grand Cayman. Yeah. Shark Ray Alley. Yeah, I did that. Shark Ray Alley. Yeah, so did that. Holchan was, Holchan was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I caught Barracuda. Oh. That went on this boat. The ladies from Heart would be very happy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that it was one of those things where you can take whatever you caught and take it to a local restaurant and they grill it up for you, and that's your dinner for the night. Yeah, that was that's nice. pretty awesome. Yeah, it was it was it was really good. And I'm not a big fishing guy, but I was I met some couple down there and they're like, "We rented a boat today. You want to come with us?" All right. That's another thing. I just went by myself, so there you go. It kind of forces you out to yeah yeah to yeah. That's a good people. way to do it too, and you know, except for on Maui. Or cruise ships. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or cruise ships. Oh, man. Yeah, same thing happened. Maui experience last year. I went to Santorini. I went to the Greek islands. And, yeah, Santorini's all couples, man. It's all honeymoon central. Yeah, that's honeymoons. Yeah, honeymooners. so just like, and then me. Hey, what's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, sir, we're going to our room. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> hey, nobody's hanging out? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, that was... The, but I had I had put it off the Greek islands for that reason so long. It's like I gotta bring a girl to this place, and then finally I was like, I gotta see it. Yeah. Uzo's so I, on me, everybody. Come yeah, on. Yeah, I did like a six week thing, so I was like, I'm gonna go. So I went to Santorini, Mykonos, and three other islands there, which is really Paros, Naxos, and Eos. Now, is it like olive trees on an island, or <laughs> do they have palm trees too? Yeah, oh, it's, it's it's beachy. Okay, you know, it's it's nice. The food again is really good. The seafood's amazing. Right. The wine is great. But yeah, it's definitely wine country. 
beer is not that right big a thing. It's funny how you could know more about this, but the cocktails are really an American invention. Yeah, right. It's really well. They're they're because uh, we had refrigeration and ice cubes first. I think that was a big deal. Don the yeah. Beachcomber basically created Caribbean cocktails right. in his restaurant, and he used it's like rum. a Huntington Beach, right? Well, no, the first <laughs> one was in Hollywood. Oh, right. Yeah, so um, he used rum because. Coming out of Prohibition, it was the cheapest spirit because rum wasn't affected. It was all distilled over, overseas. It was distilled in the Caribbean. Yeah. And here in the United States on the mainland, you know, all the whiskey companies and all the scotch and, and everything else that, you know, we were drinking here, gin and all that, all those factories had to retool. Well, it's also and, like... Um it's, a lot of things are misleading. Like the Bloody Mary was invented in Paris, but yeah. at like Joe's American Bar <laughs> yeah. in Paris, and the Moscow Mule invented here. I, I had no I didn't idea. Know that. I, I didn't thought know it was really? like a Moscow thing, but it's it I didn't was invented know that. here. It was there one town in Mexico where the margarita was that, or was that I think, definitely a Mexican thing? I, th- I don't know. It's got to be right? sure. I know that the Caesar salad was invented in TJ. Yeah, yeah Caesar I, salad I, I too. And, and the pina colada was invented in Puerto Rico. There's two people yes. that claim the pina colada, and I went to both places to try them right. both. One of them is the Carib Hilton, which is a glass tower today, and then the other one is in Old San Juan. It's a pl- little place called Barraquina. And I'm giving them the credit because it's an old place yeah. that looks like it's yeah. a couple hundred years old. And the Dons on Huntington Beach, that just came later. That was only, oh, okay. that was a repurposed, cool, classic tiki temple that they just it, slapped it was, their name it on was, in Yeah, it wasn't a real Dons. It was yeah, a Dons yeah. in name only. There's not much on the west side here. I tried to hook you guys. I, I did some research, but they're all well, mostly, other than the uh, Purple Orchid down in El Segundo. Right. Well, we like the right. warehouse. We like Tony's on yeah, the, the warehouse. Pier. Tony's. Tony's is great. That's Redondo, yeah. though. That's yeah, all the way. The galley. The galley, the galley I was going to yeah. suggest, but you've been there. The galley's like, cool. Yeah, so. that's, that's and on this Main Street here, that's there's not much left that's classic. I mean, the, a lot of Irish, out of though, business. right? O'Brien's closed. Whoa. Yeah, last year. That was a big loss. Chai of Venice just What closed. are they putting in there? Uh, it's empty. It's still sitting there. <sighs> Empty. Chai wow. is closed. That hurt. Everything that, just jacked up, you know, when things gentrify. And you know, Hal's closed a few years ago. And the new one just closed oh. on Abikini. So they've the rents have gone up so much. Who can make well, it? Well, what's the point? Then you're wouldn't gonna you get rather, some big national chain and then, wouldn't you rather just collect a rent check from some guy paying your steady amounts of money? Something, than, right? Than having an empty than paying property tax on an empty space. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing. Yeah, Silicon kind of Beach, man. This is all Google over here. In yeah, America. right, right. So they've changed the neighborhood completely. Do, are there shuttles and stuff now, like Google shuttles? No, well, they have a, their campus is kind of closed. Okay. So they have their own restaurant in there, like mm, old cafeteria. Right. So a lot of businesses are complaining. It's like they they don't spend any money, like for lunch yeah. or anything like that. And it's, the employees aren't they, paying for it either because right. Google's giving it to them, and they can't afford. You know, the, so they're not getting any ancillary. Yeah, like certain places, the rents have gone up, yeah. and, but nobody can afford to live. It's yeah, it's. But yet, all around the entire building is all just homeless, just sleeping on it. That's such and a RVs bummer. and no. people living in them. Well, you think okay, well, all these smart people working at Google, why don't you solve this problem right here? But that's America in a nutshell. Yeah, you know, I mean, I would even in a place like Romania I went that I didn't see that on the streets, like block after block. No. Of, Tent cities. It's like third world stuff. Uh, there you go to downtown LA, and it's well, the typhus. It's is like out, nothing I've ever know, seen. The, typhus is a thing in downtown and city hall. Yeah, yeah. It's it's shocking. It's, it's terrifying. And I don't see that in countries that we assimilate with being that right. You know, no. poor. But it's I see it here. Yeah, it's interesting to see how things it's are going to shake. It's out. a very me first. Yeah, you know. Well, we don't like the poor in America. Well, uh, we don't. We, we don't. demonize them in, in a way that I don't see other countries doing. And we don't so, like family as much. But we either. love rich people. Man, do we, we, <laughs> right. we love, love rich them. people. But we don't. <laughs> and famous and, oh, we kiss their ass. But we also don't like family. No. It's, you, you, you give me Thanksgiving and Christmas. Other than that, stay out of my life. Yeah, but, you, you, you know, a lot of those cultures and the islands and stuff like that, the idea of moving away from your family. Oh, is, it's is, forbidden. Yeah, you would never think right. And I've moved <laughs> like a thousand miles. I got a brother in Chicago, and the rest of the family's in Florida. I mean, we're all thousands of miles apart. To them, that's 
unheard of. Yeah. You, know, you wouldn't think of leaving yeah. your right. parents, especially, or putting them in an old folks' home or something right. like that. Yeah. You know, you would take care for them in your house. You don't yeah. you do that. It's so. their house. It's still there. Yeah, house. it really. And your grandma's still there, too. Well, we're going to see more of that. And they were, well, they're saying how so many millennials here in this country aren't buying houses, A, because they can't afford it. Right. You know, but you're just going to see more generations staying well, in the same Everyone's staying roof. at home until they're 40 now anyway. Yeah. So. yeah. That's so in Brazil, they would, like in Rio, they have all these things called love hotels, which are basically, you know, motels where you can get a room for an hour or something. But there, it doesn't have the stigma that it does here because most people live with their parents until they're married and sometimes even after. You need a place to go. Where yeah. You're 28 and you got a date. You right. know, where are you going to take right. them? Where are you going to take your girlfriend? Exactly. You, know, right. you don't even own a car. You can't even do it in the car. Right. <laughs> so you go to these hotels, you know. Right. It serves a purpose and you get it. Yep. But it's funny, during the World Cup in the Olympics or something, they were trying to convert those into legit hotels because they were so short of hotel space so they were converting some of these we were going to take down the jungle motif <laughs> and uh, the families are going to stay here but, it's yeah. hilarious well it's cocktail talk we got to get a cocktail time mm-hmm. to get a drink who's so, thirsty I'm thirsty are you right. thirsty Hi. are you thirsty let's do it let's do this alright well thanks again Mike for no, being thanks. on the podcast I appreciate it for that was long I didn't mean to drink no it. that's alright you for, can edit right uh, I, sometimes <laughs> I, try, I try I try sometimes we'll see what, what happens I should have swore more huh? <laughs> I can yeah. edit them in. Oh yeah, okay, you can give me. You can just give me a list of words that I can edit in. We drop them in, sprinkle them in there. So I like it. Uh, once again, your podcast, Travel Podcast dot com, or an I, uh, Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and Spotify. Yeah. Okay. And do you have a social media? Do you want anybody you follow? Yeah, uh, Travel Tales Pod on Twitter, Travel Tales Podcast on Instagram, uh, Funny Mike on Twitter, which I haven't been going to. I'm trying to. Ease off Twitter. It's too toxic after a while. But <laughs> and funnymike.com is my comedy website. So if they want to see reels or anything, and hopefully later this spring you'll see a, like comedy special on drybarcomedy.com, Great. and there'll nice. be a special you can rent. And tip, hopefully. <laughs> there'll be there's a tip button. Yeah. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Do we need to put anything up here for you, Boris? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Short and sweet. All our friends know Boris anyway. So. Yeah, everybody knows Boris. Everybody knows Boris. Everybody loves Boris. Yeah. Everybody loves Boris. They just say that. There you go. <laughs> and for all you listeners out there who have any questions, comments, or just want to leave a shout out, hit us up on Facebook at the Inside the Desert Oasis Room group page. And you can also follow us on Instagram at Polynesian Pop. If you want to check out some of our previous episodes or try to get in a future episode, go to the website, desertoasisroom.com. All right, cocktail time. Yeah! Cheers! Cheers.